Oh, boy. 300 videos. I know that doesn't seem like a lot to some people, but to me, it, it, it does mean a lot. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my 300th video celebration, discussion, whatever you want to call this. I'm joined by my, my good friends, Deadpoolzilla. Hey. And my my brother from another mother, the Mount Vernon kid. Hello. <laughs> oh boy, what are we gonna talk about? Oh, there's a lot of things I would love to talk about. We're probably gonna talk about some just some random stuff, but there's two things in particular that I really want to talk to you two guys about. We already chit-chatted a little bit about this before I started recording this, but we are here to talk about two things, and one of them is what happened to Gail Simone over at D.C., and the other is... Do what? I didn't say oh, anything. Sorry. <laughs> but the other thing I want to discuss is what's going on with Spider-Man. And what, what could we predict from Spider-Man? Uh, first, let's talk about let's talk about what happened to poor Gail. Yes. Uh, it's like for, if you if you live under a rock, you probably haven't heard this by now. But Gail Simone was recently uh, fired by email from uh, from Batgirl, and immediately got like this like this just negative negative response, and I think it was well deserved. Uh, the negative response, not the firing. Uh, but it, it just came so abruptly, and I found out about it on uh, on Tumblr. Uh, but I want to get y'all's uh, y'all's uh, opinions on it. Uh, uh, Deadpoolzilla, uh, I'd like to uh, start with you. What 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 did you think when you first heard the news about Gail Simone? Oh man, that that just pissed me off. You know, and Gail is Gail oh. Simone's a fantastic writer. I love her Secret Six uh, story uh, stories. Excuse me, those were some of the best stuff at DC before the reboot. Uh, her Batgirl stuff I never got to read, unfortunately. And it, what pisses me off is that now she can't do the story arc of revealing how Barbara got her legs back. Um, well, ne well, it'll probably be it. Well, it probably will be told, but not the story mm -hmm. she wanted to tell. Um, so that's kind of the thing. It's basically, what I want to know what was the point of firing her. At what point in, in, in DC's mind did they think, oh, let's just fire, let's just fire one of our, you know, best known writers. You know, she wasn't Jeff Johns known, but she had a following. Absolutely. Oh, hey, Chris, what do you think? Okay, give me a minute first. Sure. Give, give me a minute. All right, give me a minute. Ah, okay. Yeah, stay in check. All right. Okay, um, I, I also um, heard this VA of Tumblr as well as going to a couple other reliable sources, and I just literally was just, like, blown away by... And just extremely angry. I just, I was just like, are you serious? Like, uh, why would you fire her? And then hearing that she was fired via email just really pissed me off even more because it was, I, then I started just thinking back to how Steve Austin was fired by Eric Bischoff. And I'm like, oh my God, this is Eric Bischoff all over again. When DC fired their only female writer, and probably by far, uh, I'm not going to excuse Deadpool. He said, "Not Jeff Johns." No, I will. I will have to disagree with that. She was Jeff Johns known. Her her secrets. Her secret six was great. Her, she knew Batgirl so well, and now we're not going to. She's not going to be able to finish telling her side of Bab's story. Yeah. And I, I, I felt that because of that, 
it, it, it was like she okay why why would you do that and and I heard that it was because of the new editor of Batgirl letting her go and I'm like you bastard so I, I really went up on Twitter and I just I just said I just tweeted her I'm like Miss Simone I am so sorry you know, and I literally wrote in capital letters that e email. Are you kidding me? An email. So then it makes me wonder. Okay, you know where she's gonna go now. But the thing about it is, she's been taking it in so much strive now. She's been taking it like a trooper. Um, she has just been telling her fans like, look, I I'm getting offers out of the woodwork from big companies to small companies. I mean, I remember literally finally tweeting her for the first time, and was like. She's not going to re reply. And I asked her. I literally asked her, Miss Simone, if there's any character that you would like to write, who would it be? A few minutes later, she wrote back, well, Christopher, if that's if you want to know, I would love to write Spider-Man. And I was like, I thought about it. I'm like, I would love to see her take on Spidey. I would love to see what she would do with that character. And so I'm, I'm not as angry as I was before, but it's st the anger is still there. But knowing that she's going to be all right, I'm I'm fine with it as much. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I've been I I've been talking to her as well. I mean, I spoke to her on uh, on Tumblr, and I asked her the same thing you asked her, Chris. And I asked her, you know, if there was any characters that she would like to write, you know, what would they be? And she told me Spider Man as well. But she also told me she would like to write for the Turtles. Yeah, oh. I remember she also wanted to write the Shocker. <laughs> I, hell, she could, she could write an advertisement for the phone book, and I would think it was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, people. I'm, I'm sorry, people. Yeah, we're, we're Gail Simone fanboys here. Okay, I'm not even gonna lie about that. Oh, you friends <laughs> can't uh, get over it. I, um, I know we probably you mentioned this earlier when I stepped out for a second, but I'm gonna say she'd be great on a She-Hulk or Spider Woman book. Hey, she could, she could, yeah. Uh, but uh, I was want to tell you too about something that you probably don't know. Um, I y'all uh, Chris knows uh, about my dear friend uh, on Tumblr. <laughs> you, I, I swear to God, this is her Tumblr name: the Finger Fucking Female Fury. Oh, uh, Miss Four uh, F. Uh, well, I like to. Yeah, play. <laughs> but. Um, I, I speak to her almost on a daily basis, and she is such a sweet person. Uh, but I learned through her, and I asked Gail about it, and this was true. Gail was planning on uh, introducing a transgender character into a Batgirl story. Whoa. Yeah. That'd be a first. Yeah, she started speaking about this about a couple months ago, and then whoop a doop a doo, uh, what happens? Mm -hmm. Coincidence? Yeah, I just. I think now, not. Th I'm now, I'm not saying that's the reason why she was let go. I'm just saying it just seems a little funny that she talked about doing something like that, and then just like that, she's gone. And, and she was asked about it, and she still wants to uh, write a comic that focuses on more on homosexual and transgender characters, it, which is one of the things she is known for. I mean, but I just find it a little funny that this happened to her shortly after talking about doing a story like that. And there were rumors, and I even talked to her about this, and there was rumors going around that um, there was going to be a story in which Barbara's uh, roommate oh, was going to develop a, cr a crush on her. And I asked Gail about that, and I said, why do I feel like, why do I have the feeling that that's what's going to happen? And she replied back within minutes saying, who doesn't feel that? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. That, that sounds like something Gail would tell me. Uh, but, I mean, there was, like, Gail had, like, so many plans for Batgirl, and it, they were just all shot, where I think, for hateful reasons. But that's just yeah. that's just what I think. I, I can't prove anything, so, eh. Yeah. But that is a little too coincidental, regarding, you know, all that evidence that a few months after you tell all this stuff, and because 
two of her best known characters from Secret Six were uh, the, the relationship between Knockout and Scandal. Yeah, and it, it worked out so. And that was such. I, I loved Knockout and Scandal not because not because it was a girl on girl relationship, but because even <laughs> even with that it. It's still, we, when you take away the superhero aspect or the comic book aspect of it, it actually looked like a legitimate relationship. I mean, the way they would talk to each other, the way they would argue or how they would get along, it looked like something that you would actually think a, a legitimate couple would do, minus the, yeah. minus the comic yeah. book and the comic book aspects and the killings. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And when you're when and when you're willing to go to hell for the person you love, big points. Absolutely, right. I think that was one of the very very big moments that really made the fans love this couple. And I'm still begging DC to bring give us back Scandal Savage, but now that Gale's gone, I don't think I can wish for that anymore because nobody could write that better than Gale. Hey, See, how do you? That's, and that's the thing that. Um, I've been talking to a couple other friends of mine, like um, Comic Uno. I was talking to her not too long ago, and she was telling me why she may drop the book because uh, she's a big supporter of Gail Simone. Gail's not going to be on Bad Girl no more. It's like, what's the point, in a sense? And I, I was telling her, I was like, you know, maybe you should at least give the next writer at least a, maybe one or two issues before you drop yeah. it. I'm going to stick with that girl because, you know, like uh, Chris, you said when you review Hawkeye, you're not getting that book to support fail fraction. You're getting it to support the character. Just what I feel yeah. like I should do for Batgirl. You know, I, I love that character. Okay, uh, there were a lot. Now, not, not everybody liked Gail Simone's Batgirl. There were plenty of people on the internet who bitched and complained about it, saying it, they, they miss Stephanie Brown and they want Batgirl back and they want Barbara back in the wheelchair as Oracle. And that's another rumor that's floating around on the internet is that DC is planning on putting Barbara back in the wheelchair and making a new Batgirl, which right now. The, which, if. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if I could say one thing, because I know I'm going to forget it later. I have a feeling if they're going to do the whole new Batgirl thing, it's going to be that Harper Rowe character. Huh. Didn't think about mm. Well, it just seems kind of weird that we have a Batman fangirl running around, and she's incredibly intelligent. She apparently knows how to fight, from what I understand. It just seems like if, if that rumor's true about a new Batgirl that's not Stephanie Brown, eh, I'm going to say Harper Rowe. Mm. It is interesting, but here's the thing thing is like i too loved stephanie brown as batgirl she was a great batgirl i loved barbara as oracle oracle was awesome but here's the thing i'm speaking from a biased fan perspective when i look at barbara gordon even when she was oracle when i looked at her i still saw in my heart i saw batgirl she, mm-hmm. when I was a kid, she was Batgirl. I grew up with her being Batgirl. I grew up watching the Adam West 60s TV show. That's where I first saw Batgirl. And I saw Batgirl in the comics. And I was like, this character is awesome. Uh, you know, and that's the Batgirl I grew up with. I, I didn't mind Cassandra Kane either. I thought she was a decent Batgirl. But... She was more of a violent Oh, God, yes. But... To me, Barbara Gordon is Batgirl. That's who she is to me, in my heart. Yes, she was great as Oracle, but, you know, it's like these fans who say that they feel insulted because, you know, Barbara's not Oracle anymore or that's not Stephanie Brown anymore. Something in my gut tells me that these fans who are saying crap like this might not have read any stories that where Barbara was Batgirl in the past. They all they know is Oracle and Stephanie Brown. They don't know the stuff from the past. I'm sure if they go back and read some classic stuff, maybe read Batgirl Year One or something like that. Maybe then they would appreciate her a little bit more. Uh, but um, yeah, 
But we're kind of getting off topic. We were talking about uh, how unfairly Gail Simone was let go, and here we here we are talking about Batgirl. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it, 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 it's fine. I mean, it, it's a good point, regardless. Yeah. And um, it makes notice DC's had this huge trend of a lot of their big name care people are leaving. I mean, uh, Grant Morrison's leaving the image very soon, and I mean very soon. In about two issues after Action Comics, he's done. Um, well, actually, no. I think it's either he's leaving Action Comics on issue 16, I believe, and then when he's done with that with Batman Incorporated, then he's leaving the image. Okay. Uh, there's a. Uh, it, I mean, it is a lot of stuff that's. Um. What What else have I heard? Uh, he's leaving that book. Um, yeah. to, to focus more on the other other titles that he's working on, so. Oh, was, oh! I already, I already know who's going to be angry about that, uh, Chris. I was talking to Alex about that, and, and he was like, "Okay, that, that, that's." Well, I that's, mean, Knoxcon's going to be, Knoxcon's going to be pissed off. Mm-hmm. Swamp Things, Swamp Things is one of his books at DC right now, so James is going to be mad. <laughs> Uh, I had, I had uh, recently heard that Jeff Johns is leaving Justice League here pretty soon. I yeah. he's, he's also leaving uh, Aquaman. Really? Yeah. Now, he's yeah. got three. Now Jeff Johns, right now as we are filming this, he has got three. He's got three titles. He's got Justice League, Aquaman, and uh, Green Lantern. And I've already said, and I will say it again, uh, Aquaman's his best stuff. His Justice League shit, and he can kiss my ass. Uh, uh, his Green Lantern stuff, if I had to give it a medal, I would sometimes give it a bronze, maybe a silver. But, yeah, it's like, ever since he... Ever since he started... Ever since his Justice League story started looking like it was something that only he wanted these heroes to say, then I decided I was done. It all started for me when Batman acted completely out of character, saying he wanted the JLI shut down. Oh, don't get me started on and the JLI. And recently, mm. in in one of the last, in one of the very last issues of Green Lantern that came out, there was a scene where the new Green Lantern ba- uh, Boz was confronted by the Justice League, and he and they said, "Well, a new Green Lantern emerges when an old one dies." And he, Barry Allen. The Flash. Barry Allen says, "I hope it was Guy Gardner that got killed." Oh yeah, yeah. I'm like, I remember when that. the fuck does Barry Allen talk like that? I'm like, oh my god. I was like, I was so pissed off. I was like, Jeff Johns, you can bite me. Oh, I, I, it's like as soon as I read that panel, I I was within an eyelash of dropping the Green Lantern title. So well, insulted, it was god awful. Um, I think if since if those are true, because I know he's leaving Aquaman, and if it's true, he's probably if he's it really is leaving Justice League. Maybe he's going to focus all on Green Lantern now, hopefully, or well, they'll have him on also, different. He, well, he also has Justice League of America that he's going to focus I'm on. Not, oh, yeah, oh yeah, that. I mean, here's my problem. And, and now we're getting two other books. Katana and Vibe are getting books. Really? I don't mind Katana, but this Vibe, I'm not no. really too... I ain't getting it. I'm not... I'm not no, I mind. I mind these Katanas getting a book. I mean, I don't hate her outright, but she gets a book before Wally West. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Vibe? But they're, they're saying this is a, a different Vibe. This is not the breakdancing Vibe, but I'm still like... I still call him a little bit of bullshit because they're saying like he's the most powerful superhero now, and I'm like, okay, now I'm all right. Uh, okay, Johns, whoever's writing this shit, yeah. Okay, I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to be persuaded because you're pushing this guy now. He's the strongest. You know, singing his praises. I'm like, get, get Jeff out of here. Johns, you miserable miscreant. You can blow me. Wow. Like, I, like I've said, guys, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Look, there's only one thing that keeps me on that ju- that Justice League book, and that's Cyborg. Is the only, and he's, and technically, sometimes they write Vic right. And I'm like, yeah. that's not how Vic would act. Like, 
I'm, I'm lonely. I, I, all I do. I'm like, why is Vic acting like a fucking crybaby? Pardon my French. And, and, yeah. yeah. And then there's, um, but then, and then of course, it's the back issues of the Captain Marvel. I refuse to call him Shazam. Which Are really well, good. It's, I call Justice League Jeff Johns Clubhouse because that's his that's his Justice League. It's all it's like when he writes Justice League, I see him writing the Justice League, acting like acting and talking like the way he wants them to go. He doesn't care what the fans like, obviously. And for all you Justice League fans out there who think that Jeff Johns Justice League is five star material, think it's a perfect comic book. Y'all are out of your damn minds. I'm sorry, but <laughs> his words, his words, not well, ours. Look, I'm not trying to be insulting. If you do like Justice League, that is fine. The point is, I hate it, and I don't mind. I don't care about Superman and Wonder Woman being a couple. If they're going to be a couple, great. Go for it. Do something with it. I don't care, uh. Because I've never really been that big of a Superman fan anyway. I understand Deadpool Zilla is, and that's great. I mean, everybody's entitled to like what they like. But everybody... So, Wait, what do, what, what do I like? I was spaced You out said you like Superman. Well, not the book right now. I the character. Oh, yeah, the char- okay, yeah. Everybody can like a character, and everybody can choose to hate on a character. Everybody has the right to their own opinion. But it's like... I would rather have Gail Simone writing stuff like Justice League rather than Jeff Johns because, to me, DC knew. I think DC knew they fucked up by firing their, perhaps their most popular writer. And when Gail Simone gets picked up by somebody else and starts writing a book for them, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit DC right in the balls. It, DC's not going to lose any money, of course, but, I mean... The amount of attention she's getting, the publicity she's getting, the offer she's getting, you know DC's going, ah, we fucked up. I'd be like, like, yeah, suck it, DC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we got two words for you. <laughs> uh, suck it. How's Hurricane Chris coming, dude? Is he, is he? Uh, he's, he's pretty much in the back burger. He doesn't have much to say. He's, he's kind of cool. Okay. Hey, man, what about me? Don't I get to say anything? Don't, don't Shut bring that asshole out Get here. out of here. Fuck you. Fuck don't you back. Get out, out of here. <laughs> Sorry, my Earth 2, my Earth 2 counterpart tried to sneak in here. I don't need him. I don't need him. <laughs> that dude is a dick. But he for, he needs to remember it works for me. <laughs> I've been getting a lot of he's been getting a lot of attention on on my YouTube page. There's one guy who said push or push Earth Two Goblin or we riot. Uh, I don't know what he's talking <laughs> about. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry guys, but I got I gotta step out. Uh, too much background noise and too much stuff going on on my end. So, unfortunately, I have to leave. Hey, I, hey, we completely understand, man. We don't mean... We're not trying to hold you up or nothing. But before you, before you go, yeah. before you go, I want to I want to personally... I want to thank you for for, for stepping in and, and doing this with us, man. Yeah, no problem. This is fun. I really want to... I really... But there's just too much stuff going on right now to uh... uh Listen, listen to you guys and, you know, keep track of everything that's going on out there. Hey, hey we, I completely understand, man. All right. Well, um, I'll, uh, I'll be seeing you guys. I hope I get to talk to you guys very soon. Hey, man, you keep it easy, dude. Later, guys. Later, Bye, guys. Godzilla. Ah, mm. uh, it's, it's a shame. Just you and me, master. Oh, the student. Ha. Huh. No. What uh, should we keep? Uh, sh- uh, is there anything you'd like to add to this whole Gail Simone thing? Uh. Bottom line, just signing off. Basically, 
and I wish you nothing but the best, and I will support you no matter where you go. Very well said. And Gail, if you're if you're watching this, I hope you are, because, yes, I counted. You have plugged my channel. You have plugged my show four times on your Twitter page. And uh, you tell me you watch. And, uh, when I wished you a happy Thanksgiving, she, she told me, and I quote, I'm thankful for your show. And um, whether Gail actually watches this or not, it's it doesn't bother me if she doesn't. But the fact that she at least plugged my channel several times, that is such a tremendous honor for me. But Gail, I love you to death. And I wish you nothing but success in whatever you do. And here's God hoping you write Spider-Man or the Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of the Turtles, uh, the new issue of the Turtles came out today. And I've already read it. Uh, have you read it yet, man? No, I haven't gotten. I, I read my, I read my books in alphabetical order, so I haven't gotten the T yet. Okay, but uh, it's I've already read it. It's awesome. It is awesome. They got a new artist. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Uh, is is the Neutrino? Yes. It? It's the okay. Neutrinos from the '80s cartoon. Same name, cool. same cool. same hairstyles. I love the new artist. Uh, who's, who's, let, me, let me see. Who's doing the artwork for this? A uh, little preview of comic book review, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the artist's name is Ben Bates. Ben yeah. Bates. Yeah. Uh, I, I like his artwork. I think this is the, some of the best artwork I've seen for the Turtles in quite some time. And, yeah, because uh, you you, you, you've been on a rant with the, oh, my God, get change the artist or do something. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I tell it like it is. I'm brutally honest. And, yeah. you know, if if I don't like the artwork, I'm going to say so. <gasps> Excuse me. Like, uh, it's like, I will admit, I I like I actually like Chris Bocciolo's artwork, and I understand that you don't. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, guys, Um, if you know me, guys, yeah. I am not a big fan of Chris Baccio's art. I I just it, it's something about just the way he draws people. Just they have this funny looking. They look like child rugrats in a sense. <laughs> their noses are really big. Or their eyes are big, and I I I, I, I just uh, it's, it's kind of hard to explain sometimes, guys. Yeah. Uh, I am going to be getting the first three issues of the new Uncanny X-Men with Bendis because uh, as much as I have been completely shitting on Dick Summers, I am really I am interested in what this new series could be like. Uh, I'm gonna give it a chance. And uh, I'm just going to get the first three issues, and after that, I'm going to determine whether or not I'm going to stick with it, or if I'm just going to say fuck it and drop it. I'm also going okay. to, um, my girlfriend's mother, uh, who runs the shop that I go to, she is uh, also helping me with the, uh, I'm going to pick up the first three issues of the uh, Fearless Defenders. Oh, okay, yeah. Cause I, yeah, I, I don't blame. You. I'm a fan of both of those characters. Yeah, so. I, I was hooked I, when I saw who was on there and who they were fighting. You got the hand on one side, and you got the undead, the uh, the undead as guardians or the the uh, the zom guardians as I like to call them. Uh, I, of course, I'm a zombie nerd, so <laughs> I love zombie yeah. stuff. I'll, and and other than that, is the. They're, though Valkyrie and Misty Knight are the two core members, but uh, we got Danny Moonstar gonna be a part of the group too, because I seen the cover, the third uh, cover. Yeah, I of heard it. about that. I heard about Moonstar uh, being on there. I'm really, really looking forward to this. And Quadruple F or Four F, as you call her, she's also looking forward <laughs> to this. Um, but uh, let's see. Uh, you didn't pick up Fantastic Four, did you, bro? No, I didn't. Thank God. You just saved yourself $4. Because uh, I read it. I, yeah, I saw your review. And I, I, understand. I was laughing through the now, whole look, thing. I understand Matt Fraction is Kelly Sue DeConnick's husband. 
from what I, I, I that's what I was told. And mm-hmm. look, I'm not trying to insult Miss Miss Kelly Sue, but uh, uh, failure fraction can kiss my ass because uh, <laughs> oh, I hated what he did to Fantastic Four. I hated it. I mean, he was following Hickman of all people. Uh, granted, Hickman's fire, granted Hickman's flame was was blo- was being blown around in the wind a lot toward the end of his run. I mean, I got to be honest, Hickman's run on the verge of its ending, it wasn't really stellar knocking me out, you know? I'll agree with that. But still, overall, Hickman did a great job with the Absolutely. And and when I heard who was, when I saw, when they started doing the whole creative teams and you seeing who's coming for, you know, uh, FF, I'm like, no. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm but not getting But Fraction that. did one thing for me. He, he taught me one thing, very important thing, about Fantastic Four in just one issue. I, I now know Franklin Richards was breastfed. <laughs> because in three panels, it's like, I, I was like, I don't remember if it was two or three panels where he's like laying on his on Sue's tit like it was a pillow, curled up in a ball, and I'm like, what is he, three? I was like, I'm thinking he was like 10 or 11 years old, and he had like a fire in his heart, like, you know, he was a mischievous little bastard at times, he was brave, he was tough, or at least he tried to pretend he was tough. He kind of reminded me, uh, he kind of looked came off as a young, childlike Johnny Storm. And then I see him in Fractions, first issue he's a thumb sucking little mommy's boy titty baby <laughs> and he's like and the, it's like fraction nailed almost every cliche for a titty baby he 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 didn't want to eat and he he wanted to eat at the dinner table but he would only eat at the dinner table if he got to sit on mommy's lap or it's like he couldn't sleep can he sleep with mommy and he wanted to sleep with his head on on her breast like a pillow and she's just going to lay there and read a book and go to sleep while he's cuddled up in a ball. And I'm like, this is not the same Franklin Richards that I knew from Hickman's run. It's like they just flip-flopped him, character development-wise. And then they're, then Fraction's going to develop a story where the Fantastic Force powers are killing them now. And... they done that? Yeah, already? it's... it's and I made... Now, when I reviewed the book, I said it only took them 50 years to do it. And I'm like, I, I got to retract that statement, okay? It's like, yeah, it's like, that is unoriginal because they've already done something like that before. And I'm like, unoriginality, complete, char- complete uh, character development failure. I mean, not even Mark Bagley's wonderful artwork could save this. The artwork was incredible, but the writing, the, the poor dialogue, the poor characters... It was crap. Mm. I'm glad. I'm. I'm happy you didn't pick it up, man. Because if you were to pick it up and read it, I swear we might have been seeing Hurricane Chris. I, I, I would have thrown the book. Just like me. <laughs> I would have thrown it. I. I. Uh, well, I will let you know. I did pick up. The um, first issue of Cable and X Force. Yeah, I, oh man, I, 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 with all these books I'm adding to my, these books I'm adding to my poll and everything, I had to unfortunately make the decision that I wasn't gonna jump on board with X Force since I didn't read Uncanny X Force. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay off of it because. Well, that's you see, that's where you have me see, because then I can tell you what's going on. Yeah, here. I do appreciate that. It's it's like I'm not I'm not a rich guy. I can only afford so much. Right, but I'll let you know right now. Um, first issue was pretty good. Really? Um, uh, Salvador La Roca's artwork is as great as it's always been. Oh, oh good, um, good artist, good artist. So um, we kind of get a, a sense of where the team is coming from and, you know, how Cable got them together and what's going on with Cable now that the techno virus is out of him. 
and things like that. Uh, we also get to see, you know, Hope. She confronts her dad, and you know, and Salvador Roca makes her look kind of her age, not looking, making her look twelve-ish or something oh, like that. Oh God! Yeah, don't even get started on that. And she, she, she confronts him, and I, I love how she confronted him. Was like, you know, you're my father. You're not supposed to be skirking around in the shadows, just watching over me. And she's ciphering. Cable's uh, telekinetic powers while she's doing it. So, and then you got Doctor Nemesis, Doctor Nemesis saying, uh, "You know, she's ciphering your your telekinetic powers, and she looked like she might throw something." And she, Cable's like, "Yeah, I know." And then she just says, "I missed you too," and they hug. And I'm like, "Oh, that's look at that!" But that it was sounds funny. like Cable and Hope. That does. It was just funny how um, they just did that. Um, but it's good to see Cable and Domino back together. They've been around since the 90s, X-Force. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, uh, Colossus is on the team, and he's not a drug. Thank eater. you. Is he? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Does he still have the Juggernaut uh, powers? or? Did... No, he doesn't have the Juggernaut powers. Yeah, because I understand that the, the Phoenix Force had messed up their powers and everything. You know, I know Emma can't read minds anymore. Scott's eye beams, he's no longer in control of them anymore. Uh, Magneto's powers have gone wonky. He was exposed too much to the Phoenix powers around him. And I, I, I got okay. That kind of makes sense, sort of. Yeah, I, I was, I was. It, 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 so they're going to continue that. All the the Phoenix Five that were part of it, you know, there there's going to be, you know, um, some problems they're going to have with their powers. I, they haven't really shown what is the problem with uh, Peter yet. Um, maybe he can't go back to his regular skin now maybe he's stuck in his metal his uh his metal skin that would be uh, a nice twist and i i actually don't mind what they tweaked with uh iliana because you know iliana's a bitch i'll go ahead and say it but that's what better way to get emotionally invested in a character than taking a character that we that not everybody loves and make them more powerful, you know, and it's like, if it's an evil-ish character, make them really powerful, and then give the readers the desire to want to see a hero beat the living shit out of them. It's just like the wrestling business. You build up your heel, you make them dominant, you make them brute, you make them brutes, you build them up, only to have the baby face finally come back and make that underdog come back and win the day which is what the wrestling business doesn't fucking believe in anymore. Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, uh, the fact that she now is kind of fully in control of, of Limbo just really scares me. It's like, yeah, give the crazy girl the power over Limbo now. Yeah, that could it's, really it, that could really make for some wild stories. And the, the fact that wow, Emma has, only has her well, the bitch, the bitch only has her uh, <laughs> uh, only has her uh, secondary mutation. Like wow, okay, she's no longer a telepath. Now. That's that's me. messed I'm up. I'm glad she can't read minds anymore because if she could, she could read Scott's mind and go, oh shit, I need to find me another piece of pussy. Yeah. <laughs> I think also, because, okay, my problem with Emma was with a telepath, she, she had no boundaries. Like, she, you got Professor Xavier who was always like, you know, I'm, I don't go read, read in people's minds without somebody giving me permission. Emma ain't like that. She just do it. And I'm like, hey, bitch, like, what's wrong with you? Like, come on, like, a little sense. Like, come on. Yeah. There, there's a thing called privacy. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And it's like, I kind of feel a little bad because uh, 4F on Tumblr, uh, that's her favorite character is Emma Frost. One of her favorite characters. Okay, don't don't tell her I told her. Oh, you I already, tell told, her I said I, oh, I already <laughs> told her that I can't stand Emma Frost. I think she's a bitch. Right. And she said, that's fine. She told me it's perfectly fine. If you don't like her, she said, that's, that's fine. It does not offend her at all. Not at all. Okay. She's all right, an... I post pictures of Emma Frost on my Tumblr page just for her, you know, because I figure, you know, she'll reblog it, and then it'll get reblogged, and it'll get reblogged, and it'll get reblogged, because she's got a big, she's got a, 
a lot of people who like to reblock her stuff, and I'm like, and she's been nothing but sweet. She's been a sweet friend, and you know, I figured, you know, I should do that for her. You know, just she she always loves to see Emma Frost on her dashboard when she goes on Tumblr, so I give her some pictures of it of her, and I'm like, there you go. But I've already told her I I don't like her <laughs> because I was like making her an X Man, putting her on the team from the beginning was a mistake. I I didn't mind her when she was the White Queen with the Hellfire Club. She was a good villain. She was a shitty hero. You know how you well you I mean you should know how I feel about you know, villains going on teams, especially without any kind of you know reason and I thought she was bad on it was I thought that was the worst thing to do put her on the team I thought it was worse to put when Rogue was leading a group of X-Men she had she had uh Mystique and Saber 2 the on the team Supernova like, the Supernova story I remember that one yeah I was like are you crazy like why are they on the team I always I, but then I'm like okay with Juggernaut, it came a little different because at least Juggernaut kind of went to jail and ser served his time. And they kind of showed him that he can change because we saw him getting really close to uh, Fish Squid Boy at a time. And I was okay with yeah. that. And, and But, you know, but, but then later on we saw that because of him becoming kind of good. Cider Rack was like, hey, you can't do that. I'm, I'm taking the powers, taking the powers away from you then. Mm. But it's like, I would love to, uh, uh, it's it's a shame that the, the last run of X-Men Legacy is, is over with. Because that book ro showcased Rogue really, really well. Uh, but I would love to see an X-Men title or an X-Men team with Rogue as the leader. That is... I'm writing that. Really? That yeah, <laughs> send me a um, of that shit. Uh, <laughs> no. For for the um for the uh, Marvel twenty twelve site, the fan fiction site that I write for, um, there's an event coming for the X Men called Armageddon X by by our editor, uh, and I told him that if you have something planned for that, where I put a group of uh, X Men together led by Rogue. and basically he's like, okay, cool, lay lay me lay me on the, the lineup. Uh, he's like, okay. First of all, the title of the is something that has never been done for the for the X Men in any X Men book. We've heard them called uncanny. We heard them astonishing, just plain X Men, extreme X Men. I was like, how about this? The Un X Men. Man, they don't give up. Nice. And, and I was like, so then he's like, okay, what about the lineup? And I said, okay, you want to see, you want to hear the lineup? I was like, I was like, okay. I was like, first of all, I was like, first of all, Rogue is gonna be leading the group, and she's fully in control of powers because the everything that happens on this site is after everything, anything that happened after uh, Fear itself and X Men Skimish never happened. So uh, we're, it's like fresh. Just say stuff. Fear. So I was like, okay, yeah. So we have fear itself hap yeah. So basically, Rogue's on the team. I uh, I was like, I got Sunspot, I got uh, Mimic, I got Magma, I got Hexaba, I got Psylocke, Shatterstar, Surge, and uh, Pixie, and Gent is the line. I love I love me minutes. some Surge and Pixie. Uh, so I was like. I was like, I need, I need a little. I said, I, I put a few of the young X Men on the team, but I know how. I understand. I was like, you know, I, I also believe in what Wolverine was talking about. You know, letting the kids be kids. Don't have them being soldiers. I get. I understood. That's why I was really for Wolverine during that siding. Uh, but I was like, I, I gotta have at least two of the young X Men. So I was like, I love Surge. I love her abilities, and I need a teleporter. Somebody. And Pixie's a good. I miss. I, like, I okay. miss new X Men and young X Men, man. Because she was one of the reasons why I loved that series so much. Uh, but it's it's a shame that we're we're not getting series like that anymore. We really need series like that back. Where 
Yeah, we, we, we do need the younger side of, you know, show the younger side of different popular groups. And I, too, read, love the young X-Men and new X-Men. And, you know, um, I thought I like Surge. Surge is really yeah. good. Um, I, I liked her very much. And I liked where they were going with the relationship with X-23 and uh, Hellion. And then they, they kind of ended that. And... <laughs> I wasn't too. I liked Rock Slide, but I wasn't too much of a fan of. I do like his abilities in a yeah. sense, like if his body falls apart, he can just grow a new, another stronger version of it. When I first saw Rock Slide, I was like, "This looks like a cheap man's thing." Yeah, it just looked like somebody. It looked like it. It just it looked like a ten-year-old doodled the thing and colored it wrong, and I. It, but at, when I started reading the series, he grew on me, and I, I got to like him. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, but I, God, I really wish. Uh, now I know there's a Avenger, Young Avengers, Avengers Academy, and stuff like that, or Avengers Arena, or whatever they call it. But when you think about X Men, we're talking about the X Men here. They need a book, at least one series that showcases their very young uh, team members, or developing the young and upcoming future X-Men to get us emotionally connected to these characters again. They need that. They need to... I, th- I guess they should relaunch a new young X-Men. You know? And not just... I mean, we see them in Wolverine and the X-Men, but we I think them as some more focused characters on them. For Wolverine's team. We, really get, we don't yeah. really get an emotional connection because sometimes they're referred to as just all the students and sometimes right. we don't see the characters that we loved from you know from from new and young x-men and i'm just i just want marvel to do another young x-men or new x-men uh, uh series and i would like to have christos gage write it yeah I, uh, he could do absolutely it. absolutely he could do it he, he could, yeah, he could, he, he, he could pull it off really good. Um, the ones that are still alive, because yeah. the ones that are there, uh, who else was, who else would I, like, I like Dust. Yes. I thought she was cool. Dust was cool. Yeah. Um, and I know that she's on, she's in school, and uh, Krakoa has, <laughs> yeah. has a big crush on um, Krakoa, Krakoa rules. Uh, I'm like okay, he he likes her. Um, who else there was? Um, I I really want to know what they're gonna. Um, oh, uh, uh, Mercury. I liked her too. Yeah. I, I liked her. Who? She was I haven't really seen good. Seen her in a while. Yeah, I'd like to see her again. She she's on the school. Of course, you got the 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 ch- chocos, the cuckoos, or whatever the you pronounce their name. Yeah, the Stefford cuckoos. Um, and. Uh, Quentin Choir is always trying to hit, hit <laughs> I on love them. That little it's like, they're like, get out of here. Leave, leave us alone. Like, it's, I it's love funny. that bastard. He's so da- he's so damn entertaining. It's like it's like it's like Christopher Walken. It's a win every time you see him. <laughs> <laughs> see who else? Um, what is his name? I know, I know that like the lizard boy, and he's. Kind of now, I'm like a. I can't pronounce. I, mean, he, I like, can't pronounce his name to save my life either. But I know yeah, who you're talking uh, about. He, he was a. He was a nice. He was yeah. a nice character. Yes. Like he's if another one. Like if his if he loses a limb, it it becomes much more deadlier in a sense. That's why he has that big arm. Yeah. Which um, which was a nice twist. It 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 felt a. It feels original. That kind of power. Mm-hmm. It's like not only does he regrow it, but it becomes more powerful, and sometimes it could become lethal. That's such a right. good twist. They should really develop him a little bit better. Um, thank God, they, uh, thank God they didn't kill off Brew, the little Brood kid. Yeah, yeah. God, that that dude is fun. That dude's fun to watch. I love that guy. Uh, it's like when I see these when I that's another reason why I love Wolverine the X-Men we're seeing all these young characters that we are praying that Marvel uh, pushes forward but Mm -hmm. uh, because I remember who was writing 
Oh, Mark Gudenheim. He was writing Young X-Men. Yeah, I believe it was him. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to remember some other characters that for then they brought in um uh, Gray Malkin. Yeah. Um uh Ink. Ink, yeah. Yeah, I remember I remember her. Yeah. Uh, Wolf Cub Wolf Cub died. Yeah. Uh Donald uh Donald Pierce, Donald Pierce killed him, yeah. Fucking bastard. <laughs> yeah. Was and, that um, me? No. <laughs> And I think um, there's somebody else. Um, blindfold. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, damn. Thinking about all this shit's making me so, want it even more, man. Oh, uh, uh, but um, but uh, so we're not dragging on too long. I want to talk to you now. I want to talk to you. I was going to talk to both you and Zilla, but. Since it's just me and you, I guess we can talk about it a little bit better because Zilla says he hasn't been keeping up with Spider-Man here lately. But I really want to talk to you about what's going on with Spider-Man. Uh, I want to. I just. We already know. I think a lot of people already know what our, our initial reactions were to uh, six issue six ninety eight and six ninety nine. Uh, but I want to talk about it a little bit more in detail you know uh, for, but before I get to that I want to talk about the the hobgoblin story um, I didn't get a chance to review all of that on my on my video page because I was just I was so damn busy I just I literally could not find the time to squeeze in a comic book review on YouTube because a lot of people think, oh, you just put it, you put, just put yourself on camera and just click upload. It's not that simple. First, you gotta re, you gotta find the time to record the video. Then you gotta edit it. You gotta put in all the captions. You gotta produce it. You gotta take all the pro, you gotta put it in the video program. And then you gotta produce it. Which on my computer, it takes about if you record it and uh, if you produce it in HD or widescreen format, it takes about five hours to produce. And then you then you gotta upload it, which takes about ooh, I wanna say about six, seven hours on my computer. My internet's slow as shit. But it's like making a simple little comic book review for YouTube, it is not as easy as uh, people think it is. I will vouch for that. Uh, but I never got a chance to finish my initial review. I did a, 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 a written, a semi-written review for it on Tumblr, but I know everybody doesn't look at my Tumblr reviews, and that's fine. You know, when I do written reviews on Tumblr, 90% of the time it's about, it's it's reviews of books that I don't buy, but that I have been reading. You know, as like my girlfriend's dad, or he's like, he'll buy, he'll buy certain comic books, and uh, some of them are books I don't buy, but he'll let me read them. Or if it's a buddy of mine who lives in town, and he's got the book, and I say, "Hey, you know, can I give that book a look?" and he's like, "Sure, here you go," and uh, he'll let me read it. And you know, I'll read the book, and that's when I'll review it on on Tumblr. I Google the cover and just write down what I thought. You know, like mm -hmm. most majority of the books I review on Tumblr are books I don't buy, but I do read them. And I am so behind on the Ultimate books, it's unreal. I, I, I'd love to be able to catch up on Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate X-Men. I don't read the Ultimates, uh, but, um, oh, hey, Deadpool Zilla, you back? Yeah, we kind of quiet down here. Oh, man. Uh, so what have I missed? Oh, we uh, We're talking about our Jeff. attempts to take over the world, man. <laughs> oh, damn. Did I have some ideas? I Oh, well. <laughs> no, we were just talking about some random stuff. We were talking about... Because uh, all, all I needed was a thing of moles, a, a pair of jumper cables, and a spoon. And I'm good to go to take over the world. <laughs> all I needed was some spray cheese. <laughs> but... Uh, well, we, what me and Chris were talking about, we were mostly we were talking about uh, the X Men and how we would like to see Marvel push the young X Men or new X Men again, you know, because we've been seeing them in Wolverine and the X Men, but they're just referred to as the students. We don't really get to see them that much anymore. 
but we were fixing, just as you jumped in, we were fixing to start talking about Spider-Man. Yeah. Really? It's been like 30 minutes since I last talked, and you guys are just now talking about Spider-Man? I thought that was going to be like something. I started, I started plugging the, the Marvel 2012 site again, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I really got to check this oh. thing out. Uh well, don't be surprised because I haven't written, wrote anything for it in a while. I need to get back to writing New Warriors and my Namor stories, my Avenger. You see, I'm writing five titles yeah. over there. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> uh, I'm a busy but, boy. Um, with uh, Spider-Man, I, uh, I was wanting to talk about the, the ending of the Hobgoblin story because uh, I didn't get to properly... Uh, review it on video the way I wanted to, but apparently, okay, uh, the Hobgoblin story it was going along fine until it got to the very end. I was I was talking to to Deadpoolzilla about this before we started recording, and I said, oh, the the endless amounts of plot conveniences just killed me. I did not like the ending of the Hobgoblin story because it was just like plot convenience after plot convenience after plot convenience. It's like, okay, uh, Max is still able to buy that Peter is still, still so talented with those web shooters after the Spider Island debacle. He just keeps saying, I had, to, <laughs> I, I, I had a lot of practice. You know, I'm like, no amount of practice can make you that damn good in such a short period of time. I'm sorry. Uh, it's like, the, ever since this, this magic bubble thing that Fat Quisada developed that nobody can, nobody in the universe is is ever going to be able to figure out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. No matter how smart or how intelligent they are, they will never, ever, ever be able to simply put two and two together and go, this kid must be Spider-Fucking-Man. You know, it's like... It's like the entire universe, when they see Peter Parker acting like Spider-Man, they can't go, oh, God, that guy's got to be Spider-Man. They're completely airheads. Um... And that just that just bugs the hell out of me. And there's a scene where one of the hobgoblins like throws a blunt weapon at Max Mondale, and it just bounces off of him. And he goes, "Oh, I forgot to tell you, I got a force field." Yeah, it's like that, it's like it's like when the, a bunch of preschoolers are playing. It's like, "Oh, I shot you. No, you didn't. I was wearing a force field." <laughs> Funny, I remember it's saying like something yeah. like that too, man. <laughs> Oh, I think that's where I thought yeah, of it. Yeah, <laughs> but you're right. It's like that's just a, that sounds like something little kids would say when they're make make believe fighting. It's like ah, I got you. No, I got force field. Ah, but you didn't you didn't roll the dice to get a force field. Oh, I changed the rules. I got a force field now. Oh <laughs> like, oh my god, I was it's like when I saw it's like when I saw the force field. I literally face palmed myself and went, "What the fuck?" And then we get to issue six ninety eight, and it, the art, the interior artwork was awesome. And you know, you see Peter, you know, or you know, you see Peter going around and he's web swinging. He's like, "Oh, it feels so good to web swing again." It's like, oh, it would be so nice to have a day where somebody didn't, Spider-Man, help! Well, that didn't last very long. And it's like, okay, he's quipping again. He's fighting uh, a two-bit crook who dressed up in a cosplay outfit. And he's going, oh, God, hope I didn't kill him. <laughs> he's, uh, he says, you hit in a, I think it was a cop who said, you hit him, you hit him so hard you felt like, you thought he was like the Hulk or something. He's like, oh, God, is he going to be okay? And he's like, well, need we'll to get you some questioning. Not today. And he webs off, and I'm like, yeah, that looks like old school Pete. And we get to the scene where he's like, hey, hey, Doc Ox uh, asked for you. Oh, really? And he says, no, you don't understand. He didn't ask for Spider-Man. He asked for Peter Parker. He's like, oh, okay. Let me take care of this. He's like, I'm Peter Parker. He's like, no, I'm Peter Parker. Parker and I, I'm and then I start seeing this, and he starts saying, "No, I'm Peter Parker now, Spider Man." I'm like, "What the fuck?" Yes, jaw my jaw dropped my after that. I, I had to read that twice 
just to understand. I'm like, did I read that correctly? Did I just read that correctly? And I was just like, oh my god! So th- this is how y'all gonna get rid of him? I'm like, no way! And, find it, and it's like, even after that jaw dropping moment, we get uh, <clears throat> Peter going back out to the Avengers, and I, I it's like, even after that jaw dropping moment, we had a we had a humorous moment right after that. Wolverine asks him, "Did you snuff the old bastard?" Yeah, I'm like that sounds like pre-tamed Wolverine. It sounds like <laughs> I was like, man, that that's the that's the douchebag Wolverine that that a lot of fans are wanting back. <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of funny. Um, my friend Tori Gnr one, we were talking about this, and he said. What is Marvel um, Dan Slott's sudden obsession with making Octavius 100% evil just out to get Peter Parker? Because he was telling me there was a point where the Spider-Man comic, I think like the original idea for uh, Aunt May's death before they retconned it, was uh, Octavius coming... Which huh? retcon? They've retconned Spider-Man so goddamn much you can't hardly count him anymore. Like, like the original... <laughs> Like the original death of Aunt May, where she just died of old age, apparently. You mean the clone, uh, mean the clone Aunt May that, or the imposter Aunt May that Norman Osborn hired? <laughs> I don't know anymore, but it was one of those. And um, Octavius comes to Peter Parker's house and is like, "Our our rivalry has always been on a not on a personal level. I'm sorry for attacking uh, Aunt May, and it's just it's between you and me. I don't want to." bring anyone else into your family about this. It, it, it was like Octavius in the original comics was like the Captain Cold was to Barry Allen. Yes, yes, you're right. You're right. <clears throat> but yeah, it's like, yeah, there was a, a certain, there was a tweak in Doc Ock's personality. It's like, it's like the first time he's died. Uh, nope. <laughs> and been resurrected back right. But, um, when he uh, when he died uh, the first time that I remember him dying, I mean he went uh, he went down swinging, uh, and it's like the last thing he saw was his corpse being held by uh, Stunner, of all people, who I believe was his lover at the time. Yeah, uh, it's like, yeah, folks, we uh, I remember Stunner. The '90s was a dark time, but I remember a lot of I remember a lot of shit. <laughs> I remember Stunner. I got her card. And, yeah, um, I remember that too. Like he, he was like, I think there was one point where he was like, "Yeah, I know fully well I'm gonna die, but I'm dragging you all with me." Yes, I remember that, and that was that was probably one of my personal favorite Doc Ock moments. It wasn't the best moment, but I, I, that was one of my personal favorite Doc Ock moments. Um, and that came out of the '90s of all things. God damn. Uh, Hey, I'm gonna shit on the '90s comic books all I want because that was that was the period where I got out of books and I got back into books uh, around the early 2000s. Well, look at it. Look at it this way: um, we had the bad '90s Marvel stuff, but on DC we had the arrival of you know Kyle Rayner, we had Nightfall, and we had uh, the Death of the Superman story. I yeah. believe during the early '90s, so. At DC, Mar- no, Mar- Nar- 90s DC was good. 90s Marvel could be better. Marvel's, 90s Marvel, I could wipe my ass with some of 90s Marvel. Uh, except for Maximum Carnage. <laughs> except for Maximum Carnage. Okay, yeah, Maximum Carnage get, it, it gets a seal of approval. Okay, I would love to wipe my ass with all them goddamn foil covers in the 90s. Uh <laughs> But um, we're well, getting please. off topic here. Uh, it's like we, uh, but then we get to six ninety issue six ninety nine, and we're now is that, now we're seeing this from Peter's perspective. He's like, and I love that the fact that uh, that Dan Slott wrote the story is like r- reminding us that Peter is a genius. He didn't he didn't sit there and whine for six or seven pages about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. He instantly thought, okay, Doc Ock's got my memories, so that must mean I've got his. 
I loved that that they made him think of that almost immediately. It was great. And yeah, I believe Chris, you talked about this on one of your on your last review. He got to see that fortunate memory of him and Aunt May of Doc Ock and Aunt May, and he's like, No. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I remember just, I remember just literally him, he was just thinking of, not even just that, he was just thinking about the fact that, you know, now that Doc Oxen is in his, his, he's in my body in a sense, what he's going to do with that. I mean, the things that he was showing, like, he's going to go kill the Avengers because they're not going to, I mean, they just showed him literally breaking Cap's Which neck. Is stupid. Uh, I mean, okay, this is why I think that particular thought Peter shouldn't have thought about that. It's like, even, this is Captain America, for God's sakes. Yes, he would let his guard down around Spider-Man, but I don't think I don't think he would let anybody. The amount of training that Steve has, I don't think he would but, let anybody. I don't give a shit who it is. I don't think he would let anybody just sneak up behind him and try to snap his neck. He would try to counter first. Yeah. Well, look at it this way. I mean, we probably just saw a one glimpse. I mean, if that memory was a little longer, probably we would have seen a fight scene between them. Um, yeah, it was just but, really one glimpse, really. It yeah, was just like you, you saw. And it was a, it, it's it's Ox memories, you know. It's Oct how Octavius would interpret them. You know, so it, it, in real life, that probably wouldn't have happened, but in Ox mind, that's how it goes. Yeah, but it, it, I mean, go ahead, man. I mean, it was just weird because he's also, then he started seeing, like, himself uh, poisoning Aunt May and, and uh, 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 her husband. And then just seeing him, what he would do with Mary Jane, like, was it like, was like, fuck. yeah, well, Mary Jane is, you're my property now. Like, I'm like, oh, God. Like, Mary Jane would have yeah, the okay. piss out of him if he said something. Yeah, which again doesn't make any sense because this is again Octavius. He made that deal of, I would. Octavius said the Spider-Man. You know, I never would make would, this person. I think right, Octavius no, uh, would want to live his life the way he thinks Peter would, which is probably for a second yeah. he would try to rape Mary Jane. But I'm like, and there's probably a lot of fans saying, oh, don't put Peter and MJ back together. Fat Quesada will piss in his Spider-Man pajamas. Screw that. It's like. Care. I want Peter and Mary Jane to, to get back together just, well, not just because of that. I loved their relationship. I admit, I didn't like it at first, but it grew on me over time. But I would love to see Peter and MJ back together because uh, I'm sick and tired of Fat Quisada sitting there in the corner masturbating to pictures of Peter Parker. Uh, but, um, yeah, because he Peter needs Mary Jane in his life because... To me, his relationship with Mary Jane, it added to the realism of the character development. When Stanley and Steve Ditko created the Spider-Man character, he's supposed to be, with the exception of the superpowers, he's supposed to be relatable to every single person in real life. He's supposed to be relatable and realistic. And everybody has a marriage, but since when does the average Joe make a deal with the devil to erase their marriage from existence and says when does the average joe in their relationship after going into a magic floating bubble yeah yeah so i uh, um getting back to the 700th issue you know octavius is all going no one could ever take that away he's my favorite spider-man villain but you know who i really want to see peter face off with if this is really his last hurrah Who's that? I want to. I want to see him again. Him and Osborn. One Before more dance. Again. It's like Sting versus Ric Flair. One more time. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I thought. Well, I, I don't. I, somehow, uh, Norman's al alive, and he's uh, he escaped from the hospital where he was at. So it could happen. Uh, uh, it could happen. Yeah. It's. It's I'm just waiting. A giant size eight dollar comic book, so. And it's got like a, a hundred and something pages. So it could happen. Yeah, I mean, and um, 
Yeah, that's kind of the thing. Is Nor- I feel like Norman should be the final guy he runs across because those two have more history than him and Octavius. Yeah, I mean, uh, Gwen Stacy, do we need to say anything more? Um, yeah. And I had this, um, I had this story I wanted to write for Spider-Man, uh, and you guys probably saw the video where I was talking about that Green Goblin idea I had for the Spider-Man comics. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I've seen yeah. it yet. Yeah. It's basically what it is, is Norman Osborn going back to being Green Goblin and recovering the memories. Somehow, he gets the memories back that Peter Parker's Spider-Man, and him and his goblin cult just wear Peter down psychologically and mentally. I mean, Norman even digs up uh, Gwen Stacy and Ben Parker's body. Ew. Oh, man. That's, yeah, you know what? As, as sick as this, as sick as it, what I'm about to say sounds, that actually sounds like something Osborne would do. Yeah, he would do something as demented. I mean, so Osborne is just as fucking demented as the Joker is at times. Yeah. Yeah. After I after I saw him popping lithium pills that uh, in one, so I'm like, yo, yeah, he's he's crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, but yeah, that was the kind of the thing is that um, him and his gob he basically has his goblin cult dresses the Green Goblin with all the technology like goblin gliders and pumpkin bombs. Give them all pump, you know, ramp them up on the goblin serum and sick him on Spider Man. Dude, wow, what a way to go. But what are you? What, what yeah. are your? Uh, what are some of your actual predictions for the big seven hundred? Uh, I don't know. I mean, that's a that's a big that's a big question, right there. Is that the big seven hundred issue? Is that um, first off, you know, I'm surprised they're making it to seven hundred. But then again, the renumbering back to you know back to number one. Marvel is very big on the renumbering. Well, they're actually they are actually canceling Amazing Spider-Man, and they're restarting it with yeah. the Superior Spider-Man. Yeah. Which um, I've, yeah. the, I've read the first uh, couple of pages of. I have. Um, yes, yeah, so I. I uh, yeah, like I said, it's back to renumbering and calling it Superior. I could give a, I could give a rat's ass what you call it because it's not going to last. Here's the thing. You have a man, and yes, this has been done before, someone else other than Peter Parker being Spider-Man, but it never stays forever. So this is probably going to be like an arc or maybe three, a few issues. I give it, my my bet is it's going to be 12 issues before it goes back to Peter Parker at issue 13. But that's just me. I give, it a, year, I give it a year or two before, the, um, I, I give it at least a year before Amazing Spider-Man comes back. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, with, with uh, seven. Yeah, or one. if they renumber it with number one, that's just like, uh, I'm still gonna buy it, but it's just like, ah, uh, really? I was like, yeah, like yeah. I know. What... I would love. I was like, if if I live this long, which I'm willing to bet I will, but I would personally love to be able to go to the store, to go to the comic book store, and take off the wreck, Amazing Spider-Man issue number one thousand. <laughs> yeah. I would love to do yeah. that. I'm glad I, I I said it. I'm glad to see that he he made it to 700. Not not everybody can say they have, you know, <laughs> excluding some DC characters, okay. but you know, I'm glad to see he he's one of them that made it to 700. Um well, Chris, what do you think? What do you think is what do you think is going to happen in issue seven hundred itself? Uh, somehow I think Peter's gonna is gonna succeed in stopping Ock, but it's gonna come with a consequence. That's the way I look I at it. We all, if you know Spider Man as much as I do, you know that everything has a consequence to some things yeah. he does, and that's kind of what I, I think is going to come down to. Um, is that it's a consequence that's going to happen, that's going to have him either he has to stop being Spider-Man or something like that. Because that's how they keep classifying this superior spider is like Peter Parker's amazing story is over. Now a new person is taking over. It kind of makes like, me wonder, uh, is, is Peter going to die in Otto's body and is Octavius going to remain Spider-Man in this new superior title? 
Because I have not seen these previews yet. I've I've only read. Uh, well, I picked up books today, and I they gave me a free preview of some of the, the stories that are coming. Um, you know, uh, from the new New Avengers to uh, Young Avengers and things like that, and then Superior Spider Man. A few issues, a few pages of that was in there. We see this Superior Spider Man. We don't see who it is, but he—you could tell yeah. he's. This is not Parker, because he's he's fighting, he's fighting Boomerang, Shocker, uh, a new Beetle who is a female, uh-huh. and and Speed Demon, and he's just razzing on them. Um, saying, saying, he's saying, what a joke, Shocker, same thing, and you just see them like, hey, and, and he's like, you must be a new Beetle, right? And then that's when he gets attacked. He gets hit by a speed demon. And then even during the fight, he just, he's like, and Parker did this for, he's like, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. I'm like, well, he just ran away from the fight. And uh, I found out that apparently, according to Tor GNR1, the big villain for issue one is Big Wheel. Yeah. Oh, like, boy. Yes. Yeah. Big I'm Wheel. Just, <laughs> Remember yeah. him? Yes. Uh, I have uh, I, I saw the cover for issue two, I believe, where it's you see Superior Spider-Man uh, trying to force a kiss on Mary Jane, and the look on her face was told told me everything. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, that is clearly not Peter. Otherwise, she'd be all up in it. You know, she, she she'd take that shit, but. It's, God, it's like, to me, Mary Jane was, used to be such a powerful character, uh, not, you know, superpower wise, but such, she was brave a a lot of, uh, a lot of times, uh, still, I told this to my girlfriend, Jennifer, I told this to a lot of people, I said, one of my, still one of my personal favorite Mary Jane moments was when she beat the shit out of the chameleon. I still love that moment. I I, I, I I laugh out loud every time I read that damn thing. It is how she was able to easily figure out that it wasn't Peter. It was, she was easily able to figure out it was Chameleon, and she was easily able to convince him that she wasn't onto him quite yet until she got him where she wanted him and just wailed on him with a ball, with a ball bat. That was great. I loved it. And uh, does anybody remember the whole the old Jonathan Caesar storyline? No. I don't. Uh, that was shortly after they got married. Uh, she was kidnapped by this creepy stalker who called himself Jonathan Caesar. Jonathan. Okay. I yeah. I remember and this one. it was it was yeah. the time. It was probably the first time I saw her get into trouble, and she got out of it herself. She didn't get help from Peter. She was able to get away from them all by herself. She she was able to uh, get past the, his lackeys, and she smashed the, the guy in the face with a lamp, and she got away. And she she came across Peter, and he's like, "Where have you been?" She said, "Don't worry about it right now." And she and I'm like, "Wow, that was fucking awesome. I I, I liked that story." Mary, Mary MJ has grown a lot from. I, that's why I would never really call her a damsel in no, distress. No, because when push was, came to shove, she she could fight. I mean, uh, yeah. She, uh, I mean, she looked venom in the eye and sometimes and never quiver. I mean, the first time, yeah, but over time, like she will look when Eddie Brock was still venom and just like, you know, my husband's gonna, you know gonna get you and things like that it was it was just fun to see her and seeing her now i mean she's got a, a nightclub now it's like w- yeah look at the growth like she's she's an entrepreneur now you know she's not just but the she still keeps model that, but she still keeps that party girl persona the party persona hasn't yeah. really died but she has grown she's now running a business and she took a real gamble to start that business too but it it turns out it works well for her and everything, and that's that's great. 
Uh, now, I am not saying that Peter and MJ should get married again, but um, I just wish that the I just wish the end of the marriage was handled more realistically. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I, it, it's like Kozada could say whatever the fuck he wants. I was like, if you wanted to end the marriage, fine. I would have been fine. I would have been fine with it had he done it right. If he just had them, right. if he just had the realistic sense to have them get a divorce or a separation, which they've been, they were separated before, you know, uh, before this whole this whole civil war thing started. Yeah, they were. Yeah, she was in L.A. and Peter was. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, but the whole one more day was insulting enough. But in my opinion, one moment in time was just a little bit more insulting. <laughs> okay. uh, in insulting, yeah. insulting by not just exactly. But I mean, it, don't insult my intelligence to anybody. Else. It was a retcon. It, it retconned a retcon, and then later on at the end, it retconned itself. There was three ret. Okay, it, the beginning of it retconned one more day, and then the end of it retconned one more in time. It retconned itself. The end. Gotta, so it's like we gotta work and work. <laughs> it's like okay. It made one more. It made one more day completely pointless, uh, with the exception of that little wink and a nod to Mephisto being the one that freed the fat guy that fell on Peter. It's like okay, Peter can take a wailing from Rhino and from the Green Goblin. He can be thrown across the city by Doc Ogg and everything, but he can't seem to handle a simple fat guy falling on him. Okay, that's how he missed his. That's how he missed his yeah, wedding. There was. There was a fat guy. Um, he was trying to run to the wedding. He was, and uh, this fat guy just comes out of nowhere and falls on him, literally. And he, and he can't get him off. Yet of he him. can. Yet he can now, pick up a fucking got, train. Yeah, this is a guy who who got the proportionate strength of a spider to just just get. Yeah, get the hell off him. The wedding never happened. Oh, yeah, dude, that's it's like okay. yeah. It was insulting, like Gavi said. It's insulting. Casada wrote that shit. It was like, I don't. Yeah, I didn't find it funny. I was like, don't insult my intelligence or anybody else. Casada was thinking. The hell you I bet Casada was going huh, after he, as he was writing writing these stories. Huh, I'm getting my boyfriend back. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, here's here's the thing I have a problem with, and you guys can agree with me. Spider-Man, when he wants to get rid of the bullet out of uh, Aunt May, he goes to Doctor Strange, Tony Stark, even Doctor Doom, and he's like, "Can you get this bullet out?" And no one seems to know how to do it. Okay, we're talking to doc about even Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme. Can he just like teleport the bullet away? I mean, nothing in Stark Industries can get that out. Even Doom's technology can't get the bullet out. Really? Yeah, yet yeah, in one moment in time, Doc Strange was able to help erase... the Doc Strange, along with some minor help, was able to erase the memories of everybody on the fucking planet, yet he can't go back to... He can't go back to yesterday and remove a bullet. Yeah. Yeah, I don't get that. And here's, here's a guy who, in issue number 500, gave Peter... Uh, uh, a day with Uncle yeah, Ben. Yeah, he can do stuff like that, but he can't remove. But he can't maneuver a bullet's trajectory. It's like you yeah. gotta be kidding me. I mean, I mean, moving a bullet's trajectory with a simple little incantation it seemed like child's play to Doc Strange. Okay, and then we talk about. And then we see in one moment in time how how Aunt May survived. A uh, simple little chest compressor from Peter. Okay, and all of a sudden she starts breathing again, and she's fine. Uh, here's my problem with that. Uh, does anybody here remember that Peter Parker's got proportionate strength of a spider? I've seen this guy take a lead pipe and crumble it like it was paper. And he's giving chest compressions to an elderly lady? Wouldn't he have, like, crushed her ribs or crushed her bones into her organs and completely obliterated her? Unless he unless he controlled his strength, but at he times like that, yeah, I, I get it. what you say. Yeah, panicking, see, now, yeah, then you he accidentally crushed somebody by accident. 
Nah. And we've seen him when he when he freaks out, he unleashes his strength by accident. Like I remember one time when uh, I think it was an issue of Avengers where he had a panic attack and accidentally yeah knocked. And it's like it's like he's panicking, he's freaking out, and he's he's pressing down on me. Come on, come on, live, come on, live. Uh, and uh, she's fine. What? <clears throat> and you couldn't do that before. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And we it, the story ends with <laughs> with reprints of one more day with different dialogue. And she's like, why didn't you let me forget? And this made Peter look really selfish. I'm like, he, he. this is what he wants. He wants everybody to forget he's Spider-Man. But Mary Jane has to remember. Mary Jane suffered a lot, too. I would have completely understood if he was going to make her forget, too. But it made Peter look so selfish. He's like, no, she's got to remember. But Aunt May can't remember either. So... But Mary Jane's the only person on the planet that he allowed to remember. But at the same time, it just made him look like a selfish prick. Mm. And I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, as I finish reading the last issue, I think to myself, this scenario could have been the way the marriage ended. It's like she got pissed that she gets pissed and says, Peter... You acted so selfishly. This, You are not the man I married anymore. Blah, 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 blah. And she could have hit him with the big... This is how the story could have ended. With just a single splash page Mary Jane saying, I want a divorce. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I mean, it's like the fourth issue retconned the first one. He didn't have to have the fat guy land on him so he missed his marriage. Let them go ahead and get married. And then lead up to Civil War, the magic bubble thing, and she gets pissed off feeling somewhat betrayed that he would act so selfishly and not think about her feelings at all. And that could have been the way the marriage ended. I could have taken yeah. that. It still would have sucked, but it would have been a lot better to you know, it would have took it would have made a lot more sense. Oh yeah, there still would have been a hell of a lot of negative backlash on it. But, in my opinion, had they done it that way, there wouldn't be so many videos of people saying, fuck you, Quisada. There wouldn't be videos of people literally wiping their ass with one more day. There wouldn't be videos of people shredding that comic book, sending it back to Quisada, saying he doesn't belong to you, motherfucker. Uh, or burning it. Yeah, well, look at it this way. Look at it. If they did go with that story, there still would be people out there, but not as many. No. I think it would... And the other, and the other thing is, I don't. Okay, I'm going to say two things that you guys are going to hate me on. I okay, I would have punched Posada in time. Those stories suck, but I can't officially 100% hate the guy because he, in some ways, managed to save Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving that, but that still wasn't an excuse to act so selfishly and start. Oh no, no it's it's not, it's not. But I, it's not. It's not like oh I I don't I hate him but I don't like I don't hate him as much as I do. You know what's really Man, weird? Idiot. This story happened five years ago and we're still complaining about it. Yeah. Really? Have you forgotten who we are? We're comic book geeks. We don't let anything go. We don't let anything. Go. <laughs> it's magic. We don't have Too to explain go. it. It's just. <laughs> and the other thing is, and here's the second thing that you two are gonna gang up on me on. I actually, I did some reading. I've gone back and read X-Men all the way back from Schism. And I gotta say, I'm changing my vote. Cyclops was right. Hmm. Hmm. Dick Summers was right. Yeah, we don't call him <laughs> Scott. We call him Dick. That's funny. I should, that's what I should do. Whenever I read all new X-Men, when I look at the, the original Scott from the 60s, that's Scott. And I look at the Scott now, that's Dick. We got Scott and Dick. There's four summers. There are four summers. You got Scott, Gabriel, Alex, and Dick. Yeah. Well, look at it this way. And if my buddy uh, Shades at Night were here, he would be backing me up on this. 
But look at it this way. Scott's now become a survivalist. He fully understands that there there will never be a good coexistence between humans and mutants. There never will be. He's kind of, kind of like, well, we'll live with them, but we, we can't live up among them, but we can survive and learn to, go, you know, do our best with our own type, you know? because yeah, he killed the man that was going to be the face of it. Yeah. Well, no, even he, he's kind of adapted, in some ways, Scott's kind of adapted this pseudo version of Xavier and Magneto's philosophies. It's just too, it's just too bad he had to kill the man who, who represented this dream that he wanted. But here's, here's the yeah, thing. And, Go and, ahead. And, and allow me to yes, killing him, killing Xavier, with, and you can't fully blame the Phoenix Force for him doing that. You can't. But yeah, well, however, he'll, he'll 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 beg to differ on that yeah, one. He'll, he'll, yeah, he'll blame it. Summers like is completely blaming it on the Phoenix. Completely. Yeah. Uh, well, look at it also this way. Why do why does uh, Cyclops is the only one? If him and the Phoenix Five are the only ones to be punished for the Phoenix Force uh, to corrupt them, and that gives them leeway to you know fully arresting them. I mean, granted, Cyclops' act a lot of Cyclops' actions were for his own, but you know, saying oh the Phoenix, you were an object of the Phoenix, you're a threat. Well, if that's the case, Jean should have been locked up. Oh God, uh, Arc- Well, uh, also Archangel, Arc- um when Warren was under Apocalypse, you know, when he was when he was dead, he should have been locked up, even though he was under the control of Apocalypse. And when he was about to be in X, in X he was about to become the next Apocalypse. Yeah. Uh, he should have been locked up. Also, shouldn't Wolverine be locked up, even because even though he was lo- he was mind controlled by the Hand during Enemy of the State, he should have been locked up for killing, you know, the number of people that he did, even though he was controlled by Gorgon the Hand. Also, he was a horseman yeah, of the apocalypse. He was, he was, he was yeah. yeah. So, um, and several other X Men have been mind controlled. So, they, why aren't they locked up? Yeah, I'm sick. Rick and Joseph well, talking about that too. Well, uh, um, and I, I get where you're coming from because you know you're talking about also all the X Men that were uh, with Scott, you know, and everything like that. From what I, from what they told, if I remember in uh, Avengers X versus uh, Avengers versus X consequences, they said that you know people like Storm and and Betty they they turned themselves in and they got amnesty for that that stuff like that. So I'm like, oh okay, because Storm was with Scott for a while, and so was Betty and all the rest of them. So why aren't they? suffering where the others were so i understand yeah. that definitely i understand oh, yeah, that absolutely. yeah i mean what what gives them you know, even though they were supporting really a bad idea why do they do get a slap on the wrist while scott just gave full max security well hmm. furthermore furthermore the avengers versus x-men start out I think the whole thing could have been blown over if the Avenger, if captain america and the rest of them backed off and let scott do what he does because at the end, you know, the, yeah, this is leading toward the end of that story, it didn't really feel like the Avengers versus the X-Men. It felt like the Avengers and the X-Men versus the Phoenix. Yeah, that's pretty much what it felt like. And that's kind of the thing. It's like, if when you think about it, and you give it some thought, the Avengers, if they stayed out of this, this could have been blown over a lot better. Uh, this could... if Because... And the Scott brought them up on their bullshit in issue one. You know, where were you when the Phoenix showed up the first time? Why is this suddenly a problem? We've heard that before. They've done that again. They did that in Civil War with, you know, where were you when, when Mirror Island was attacked? Hell, the Avengers were probably like fighting that. on the front back then or something. I don't know. <laughs> the Marvel, the Marvel the, the, continuity is a fucking mess. <laughs> well... well now I don't fully condone everything Scott's done that in throughout the comics, but I can give I can see why he, he does the things he does now in a totally different light. I still remember, I still remember when Jean died, and just shortly after she died, he that's when he started dating Emma, and I remember uh, I believe it was in the first issue of Astonishing X Men, Logan went up to him and says, "What stage of grieving is this? Denial." <laughs> 
And then he hit yeah, yeah. First, he was standing right by his bed, just looking over him, like, "Yeah, what what stage is this?" And he shot him out of the window. Scott shot that him was, out of the to window. Me the first, like, that was one of the first signs of me seeing Scott act like a dick. I mean, you just lost your wife, so how do you grieve? You're gonna fuck a blonde girl. Yeah, you gonna put the. Yeah, and you gotta admit. Um, even though Emma's character is still kind of wrong, you gotta admit I had no problems with her when Josh Whedon was writing Astonishing. Oh, uh, Josh Whedon's run on Astonishing was excellent. It was. Yes. Um, oh God, I forgot who was writing Astonishing X Men when I dropped it. I believe it was Warren Ellis. But what the reason? The reason yeah, I, I dropped, dropped it was because Simone Bianchi was doing the artwork, and it's uh, the artwork's fantastic, but. Oh my god, it was like six, seven months between issues. By the time the next issue came out, you done forgot what the hell you read in the last one. Yeah, that's that's kind of why I, I dropped it. Once once we didn't left, I stayed on for a while. And I think about issue 34, I, I dropped it. I got sick I like, and tired of waiting for each issue to come out. Yeah, I, I couldn't wait for I was like, okay, I'm done. So when... When they started, and then I, I didn't get back on until Mar Marjorie Lou oh took God. over. Oh, my God. Marjorie like, Lou is just killing it. And I'm like, okay, okay, wow, okay. And seeing the lineup, I'm like, okay, this is not a bad lineup. So I'm like, all right, let me, uh, let me, and I, I like Marjorie Lou. I, I read her X, uh, X23. I thought she was really good on that. And so I was like. I'm going to check this out. And I loved it. I got like, back on board when North Star and his husband got married. So it's 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 been good. But uh, as for all new X-Men, I must say, you know, uh, Bendis say let you fly. He, he let it fly with the first thing. issue and then that's and but no the consistency is still there and it's like okay well, this is getting good and then that last issue is like oh. dun 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 okay now we're gonna see the younger and older coming together that that was I one thing i wanted loved to see like, what magneto told scott in the third issue yeah i thought that I was thought great that was, he was the perfect oh. guy to tell to just lay it on scott he says, yeah, you can blame it on the Phoenix Force all you want, but deep down, you know you're the one that killed him. Yeah, yeah. and again, like I said, I, I, yeah, I don't condone some of the things Cyclops did throughout the, his um, dissension, but however, I have to look at it at both sides of the coin. I, I thought it was also funny what Emma said to him. Yeah, see, I called her Emma. Uh, yeah, I think it was kind of funny what she said. Like, you left me in jail and you you stole the bond. <laughs> like, it wasn't me. It wasn't. That's all I kept hearing. That was the first two words that he would always say. It's like, what, what is this? Shaggy? It wasn't, wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. I'm like, oh, Scott, you know, what's wrong with you? Like, face on it. And me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, cool. like, yo, when are you gonna grow some balls, man? Like, when are you gonna grow a set? Like, take responsibility. Where, and then it's kind of funny. Like, it's like in the in uh, consequences, he was like, yeah, I'm responsible for everything. I'm taking full response for it. Then now you wanna you wanna do a whole 180 and be like, oh, I wasn't. When it me. gets to the point, when it gets to the point where Magneto tells him. Scott, you're acting like me. What does that yeah. tell you? Yeah. And yeah. That's 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 the an episode of intervention on Cyclops. <laughs> and I was actually starting to get some. To be honest, you know, Scott, as big of a dick as he was, I actually liked consequences. It built because the way it started out, I was like, okay, Scott's gonna finally grow a set. And he's gonna take responsibility for what he did. And by the time it ended, he's like. Fuck it, I quit. I'm gonna do things the way I want to do it. Fuck Charles Xavier's vision. Fuck all of this. It's all about the mutants, bitches, and you know, it's, it's not what he said, but it was basically the gist of it. I thought it was also interesting where they want to have 
their base of operation. I'm like, really, uh, Scott? You gonna have even a even base? Emma was questioning how I was like, Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> you gonna play well, 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 base well. of operations in a place that dissected and just messed with a bunch of mutants? Are you serious? Like, <laughs> well, where, the where, is this, where is this? Where is this basic? Weapon X. The Weapon really? X facility. The Weapon X facility is going. Oh, you mean that? You mean that place, according to Jeff Loeb, Wolverine built? Oh God, yeah. Fuck Jeff Loeb. Don't get me started. I, 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 no Jeff Loeb allowed. No Jeff Loeb. <laughs> yeah, that that's the point where I was like, you have lost your fucking mind. No, Jeff Lowe, yeah, when no, when that Lowe, when that that when that, that okay, when quote unquote that guy, okay, I won't name him by name. He who we do not speak of, he in this in his his video his uh, you know, basically of the return of Sabretooth, he wrote and I quote, no, I'm not even gonna say that. <laughs> hey, Michael, he Cole, wrote, what you got? <laughs> yeah, he basically said that. Wolverine is is responsible for the whole Weapon X program. Oh, it was him who created it. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm it's like, no me. way I'm going to buy that. No fucking way I'm going to buy that. You, you, you basically, the entire origin of this tragic character of Wolverine and saying he's responsible for Weapon X. He did it. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? He who shall not be named can lick my left nut. I was like, are you serious? And what boggles my mind, it's the same guy who wrote Long Halloween. How did you fall from this far from grace, hey, Lobe? I, 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 don't you say his name. Don't say his I name. I mean, to me, this guy could be almost worse than Fak with Zada. Because <sighs> this, dude, this dude gets off on retconning everything. I mean, Fak Wazada just retconned Spider-Man a lot, but man, whatever this, whatever he who shall not be named touches, it gets retconned. Do this, it gets retconned. Write this, it gets retconned. Because he wants to write his own stuff. He doesn't care about continuity. He doesn't care about continuations, continuations of character development over the years. He doesn't care about any of that. He just wants what he wants. far as Marvel's concerned. Yeah. Like like everybody says, his DC stuff, great. Yeah. You know, his Marvel stuff, this is the guy, this is the same guy who had the Red Hulk punch the Watcher because he thought it was funny. I'm like, what the hell did Awatu ever do to get oh. punched? Like, why Isn't is that? he also like, the reason why Spectacular Spider-Man and Wolverine and the X-Men cartoons were canceled? And Avengers. And the Avengers. Fuck you. Uh, yes. This is also a guy who thinks Ultimate Spider-Man is the greatest goddamn thing ever. You gotta be Shit kidding me. me. Why? Is it, why? Is it's written by the same guy who wrote Batman animated series? Give me a break. Yeah. I'm convinced Paul Dini doesn't have any say in that ep- in that show. No, he doesn't. Otherwise, it would have been oh. a hell of a lot better. I watched one episode to know, fuck this series. <laughs> At least Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles hasn't disappointed me. Yeah, Good the stuff. Turtles cartoon has been great. That, and I, I, I've already know that there's a second season on the way, and Casey Jones is going to be introduced in that Thank season. Thank you! And uh, did, you, did you guys see the new episode with the Mausers? No, I haven't yet. I haven't. Yeah. Was, that, was, that was funny. They, they sound like cats. Oh, God. <laughs> but it, it was still good. Um, it, 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 it felt like the classic episode with the Mausers. But, yeah, you're always laughing at Mikey's head, Michael. It's shaped like a gummy guy. <laughs> But it, it was it was still good. I, I I've been I've been loving the what is, series. What's one of your um, favorite? So what's far. one of your favorite plots plot points about the the new Turtles cartoon itself? You know, I, I, it's it's um, oh go ahead go ahead Ty. For me, it's the uh, it's I love the new story involving Amato Yoshi and Rokosaki. Love the new idea where they're going with it. 
I mean, Grant is a little close to the Mirage comics, a little bit, and a little bit of the IDW, but it's really good. I mean, Shredder in here is just intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. not and not to say and not to say he hasn't been scary, but he hasn't been intimidating before in the old cartoons. But in here, I mean, he he takes the turtles to school in the in the first episode. And you see him; they encounter him. Yeah, oh, yeah, that was, that was like, dun dun dun. It was like I oh, loved boy. I loved the fact that Rob Paulson was brought in to play Donatello. You know, if you're gonna bring in one of the original yeah. voice actors from the '80s cartoon, it's like. Making him Raphael, I think, would have been a mistake. I mean, they give him another turtle, see if he can do a, a different turtle. And they gave him Donatello, and I thought he—I think he's doing a, a fantastic job with that character. Sean Astin is doing a great job as uh, as Raphael. Uh, you got Jason Biggs doing Leonardo. Uh, I forgot who's playing Mikey. I'm always forgetting that guy's uh, name. <laughs> but I love um, I love Rob Paulson as Donatello. He is great, and. I I actually love the the twist that he's that Donatello's just like falling on crushing plus on, crushing on April. April. He <laughs> just loves April. And and um, I think it was this episode or the last episode when they they were trying to get a- April's phone back. Um, they gave a wink to the the eighties when somebody was calling her, and they had uh, they showed the name. And it said Irma. I was like, oh, wink, wink, look at that. I was like, oh, wink, wink, Irma. I was like, oh, shoot. I thought that was so I lo- cool. I was like, I, I, loved, uh, I loved the Metalhead episode. Uh, I loved the Metalhead episode, and I, I loved how Donatello was controlling Metalhead. It's like, did anybody, did either one of you notice that he was controlling Metalhead with, which, with, with, with what looked like an NES controller? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, um, I'm like, Donnie, Donnie, there's a way to beat the bad guys. Quick, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, select, start. <laughs> You'll instantly win. I, I, the, the, I, the, 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 prop, the, the thing about the show that just is, is, is that it has a mixture of everything that from that, from the franchise of the Turtles. It has a mixture of the 80s series. It has a mixture of some of the movies and the comics as well. And, uh, Nickelodeon has blended it so well, and I've liked the fact that I I also like the fact that how they are the turtles, but they're still learning. I like that they're still they're not as cohesive as a team as they should be, and we see Splinter like really even said it you know, like I've trained you as a team individually, so I thought that was really cool. Uh, uh, one of my friends will always d- laughs at um, Splinter's beard. Says it looks like <laughs> he says it looks like a uh, what did he say it was a, a, a string of gist. Oh, yeah, a string God. of gist hanging up. I'm like, oh come on, like, I'm like oh that's so funny. But I, every time I look at Splinter, I'm like, and I look at his beard, I'm like, damn it. I'm like, see now it's in my head now. <laughs> Thanks for putting it all in ours too, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, quick question, and I'm, I'm calling it. I'm calling it right now. Um, Amato Yoshi's missing daughter. That's going to be Karai, guaranteed. Yep. And and Kelly, who's going to play her? Really? Yeah, Kelly, who's going to voice Karai? Cool. Uh, <clears throat> but it's like with Nickelodeon, they're doing so well with the Ninja Turtles, and yet they. Sucks so hard with the Power Rangers. <laughs> uh. Hey, at least it's better than what Disney had. Well, actually, no, I what Disney had. Well, no, Disney had let me, it. Let me back up. Let me rephrase that. Um, there were some good points with with Disney when they had when they were under Disney. Not all of them, because Mr. I is hated them. Without a doubt, the worst. Do- the worst Power Rangers ever. Well, yeah, you I'm, 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 yeah, I'm alone in that one because I actually kind of like that one. The only thing that was cool about it, the costumes. The costume. My girlfriend called them the Harry Potter Power Rangers. I'm, uh, I, yeah, I'm alone in this one. I'm outnumbered two to one because I actually enjoy it. Chris, have you, heard, have you heard the original, the rejected theme song from Mystic Force? I, I don't want to hear it. No. No, you should. 
because it's good. Oh, it's, it's a good. Ron okay. Wasserman piece. The mm. Ron Wasserman, the guy who sang the original Go Go Power Rangers. Okay. Yeah, uh, look at uh, look it up on YouTube, like Mystic Force theme rock demo or something like that. And I'm like, mm. why the fuck didn't they didn't they pick this song? This if they if they had used this theme song, the series would have would have survived. The series would have done better because this theme song kicked ass. Um, instead of what they got, what what did they go? Here come the power. Rate. Fuck that shit. I like I like Dino, Dino Thunder. Thunder was great. Dino Thunder was great. SPD was awesome. Yeah, okay, SPD and Dino Thunder, awesome. Uh, RPM, eh, for me. I didn't even I watch didn't RPM, watch. so I don't even know. I, I never even thought of watch that one. And I tried to, I tried to watch Samurai, and I'm like, Samurai loves. Oh, I, I can't watch this. I, I can't the watch best it. thing about Samurai is Bulk's in it. That's it. Oh, he's in it. Bulk, Forever. yeah, no skull, just Bulk. Oh wow. Yeah, apparently he's with. Skull's son, Spike. Okay, but it's good to see both. Okay, but yeah. yeah. Oh well. Um, let's see. Operation Overdrive. What was the other one? I There's, remember. Okay, the Disney Power Rangers. It started with Ninja Storm. Ninja, Ninja Storm. Storm. Ninja Dino Storm. Thunder. SPD. Mystic Force. Operation Overdrive. Uh, after Operation Overdrive, what was that? there's one more. I'm, I know there was the one when they were they were dealing more with the animals. Jungle Force. Anim- uh-huh. What was that? Wild. No, not Jungle Fury. Not Wild Force. There was another that Jungle was Fury. Yeah, a there good we go. Season. It like more on. Yeah, I like that one too. That that particular season had a catchy ass theme song that sounded like shit from the '80s. <laughs> And the fight choreography on that, for the most part, was really impressive. It that particular one focused more on fight choreography than fancy guns and swords and big Michael Bay ex, big Michael Bay explosions. You know? Now, if we can only get better suits for those. Yeah, the suits sucked. They looked like. Uh, let me see. What was my favorite? I think one of my favorite episodes out is Forever Red. With all the Red yeah, Rangers. Yeah, that all was came a great back. episode, but it had a shitty ending. Yeah. Yeah, it just had so, it was so anti climax Yeah, he's like, he's <laughs> able to drive a motorcycle through Serpentera. Okay, whatever. Um, I remember they actually had an episode of when the Power Rangers met the Turtles. That was. Oh, space. that sucked. Dude, they yeah. had to use the next mutation turtles. Couldn't they have sprung for the costumes from the first movie? Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was the one where they had actually had the, the Venus, the, the female turtle. That yeah. never happened, you bastard. Yeah, oh, that never happened. God. Oh, God, that was awful. That was probably the worst episode of In Space. In Space was a great season, too. Wait, I love it. I love it in space. Actually, in space and, and Lost Galaxy were awesome. Yeah, they're playing Lost Galaxy now on Saturday mornings on Vortex or whatever. Well, yeah, shockingly, I don't wake up. I don't wake up that early. Well, you can Saturday always watch mornings. it on Netflix. So there you go. Yeah. And Netflix has all the Power uh, Ranger seasons, even that god awful remastered Mighty Morphin shit that they did last year. Yeah, they, they took the original episodes and just put a bunch of comic book captions all over it and uh, sparkling effects and all that shit. It, 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 just because you could remaster, just because you remastered Star Trek amazingly, doesn't mean you could do it for other uh, shows. They even fucked up the Green Ranger story with all that that captioning shit. Uh, it's like it's some of the Megazord fights you would see like Batman style, Batman style uh, hit effects like. Wham! Bam! Pow, and shit like that. And when when the Megazord, when the Green Ranger and Goldar destroyed the Megazord, the, like you can see, the, as the Megazord was blowing up, there was like this big stamp that said "Defeated." Wait, uh, really? oh, I remember that. that. That actually had me laughing when they 
destroy the Megazord because the, the only thing that was moving was its head. It was just sparkling. I was like, <laughs> really? Yeah. I'm sorry. It was kind of funny, though. Was... No, no, no. What what he just said, you know, the whole defeated thing. Yes. Really? Yeah. It's like with, with Power Rangers, um, it was popular when I was a little kid, when I was like 10 years old. I was 10 years old when it when it first got real big. And there were there were kids way older than me that were loving this shit. And I didn't start watching it from the beginning like everybody else did. I got on to it basically kind of like through peer pressure. I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this to see what everybody's talking about. And by when I started watching, though, the Green Ranger had already been introduced. And mm -hmm. that I had, so I jumped on board really late. But thankfully, sometimes they showed reruns, and I got to see the introduction of the Green Ranger, and I'm like, wait a minute, he's supposed to be a good guy. Why is he hurting them? And, and you know, my friend, <laughs> sometimes my friends would come over and they go, dude, this is a repeat. This is how you got it. I was like, oh, okay. They were, they were like, you didn't, you didn't start watching this? I said, no, I, I, I wasn't, I haven't really been watching this. So I started watching, and it was good. I, I loved it. It was great. Uh, action was good. The acting could be better. Uh, but, hell, the acting in Mighty Morphin is like Oscar-worthy compared to the acting in Samurai. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's the truth. It's like, okay, and it's like, um, and I started watching, started getting more into it, and then I see uh, the Green Ranger become the White Ranger, um, and... Instantly, you know, Jason became my favorite ranger. My favorite rangers, my favorite <laughs> rangers were Jason, Zach, and Trini. Oh, Trini! God bless her. Rest in peace. Yeah, Rest in yeah, peace, God, uh, God Louis Tron. But, and ironically, in, a, in I swear I'm not making this up. Ironically, my three favorite rangers were the three that were chosen to leave. <laughs> Yeah, they left, and then you got uh, Rocky, Adam, and uh, Aisha. I stopped, I stopped watching. I, I actually stopped watching after Jason, Zach, and Trini left, because those were my three favorite Rangers. But it's cool, because um, the guy who plays uh, who played Adam, he's, he's famous. Doing all, yeah. He's doing all kinds of of voice acting like. voice acting and I, lo I love him when he does the voice acting I'm like it, it, I didn't okay. get back into Power Rangers until after the movie came out I went and saw the movie and at the time I thought it was good and I look back on it now that movie sucks that movie that, that movie yeah, sucks yeah, my nuts yeah, uh, don't, yeah, don't go back and watch the movies out of because the nostalgia goggles are going to wear off in about two yeah, minutes and it's like I got back into it after seeing the movie and I'm like okay what did I miss and some, you know, I saw the movie, but I didn't start watching the show right away. And so I'm thinking, I, I think w with me, when I, I am one of those guys that watched it from the beginning. I was not peer pressured into it, because um, I took it as being okay. They're, they're supposed to be like the Voltron. Yeah, that's what I thought. And I'm, too. Like, like, I'm like, they're like, they're like Voltron. So okay, let me check it out. And here I am watching it. And then when they show Rita, I'm like. Hey, she's that's not she's not saying those words. Like her mouth is not going along that's with the words. Like what's didn't going on? Hey, we did I didn't understand it until I got older. It was like, oh, it's it's the original mixed with American, right? And they're like, Yeah, that's how I'm like, Oh, okay. So from there I was just like, Okay, let me look at this. And I'm I'm looking at the Voltron force and then I look at I look at them, I'm like, Billy reminds me of Pidge. Yep. Yep. Okay. And I'm like, he reminds me of Pidge, except he doesn't have the high squeaky voice like Pidge. Dude, you sound like Fergie you know, from the Black Cauldron. <laughs> and, um... I don't know how I, he does it. He can... Fergie have no friends. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. And, uh, let me see who else. Then I... I I said Adam and, and things like that, but I'm like, okay, and I, I can only put, uh, I can say Kimberly is the princess of lore. I never really and, and Hunk is, a, yeah, but I'm like, okay, they, they're, 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 they're the Voltron Force. The Megazord looked so much like I thought Voltron. it was Voltron like, when I first watched it. 
thought there was five oh like, version God, of that looks just with like a different Ultron. name. And then I was, oh, yeah. like, I was like, when they showed the power sword for the first time, I'm like, man, all you need to do is have him put his hands together and the and the sword, the, yeah. the sword would have came, the blazing sword would have came out of there. I was like, when I was like, okay, let me watch it through. When I was season of the original lineup, I remember when they met the mass writer and things like that. that. I which saw that in a rerun because when after after I saw the movie, I didn't start watching it right away. That's like the second I got back into it, I I, st- I was like, okay. It's like I said, they got new Ninja Zords. So I say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start watching it, and I'm still seeing the Thunder Zords. And, okay, it's like, okay, so what happened? They got the new Zords, and then all of a sudden they got their old Zords back, and, and then I see them blow up and fall apart like Mortal Kombat shit. I'm like, what? It's like I see seeing the Tiger Zords head fall off like that. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then it just... It became more like okay. Then they went from there, and then I think they went Zio or something yeah. like that. Was still I liked, I liked Zio. Thank you very much. Was, and that was where they danger in. And, Jason. Uh, uh, Jason came back. At first, it was going to be Billy, but he, somehow he couldn't convert with the the. I power wanted Billy to be the Crystal Gold Ranger. Ball. I really did. I didn't know Jason was coming back. Then Jason came back. They got Jason in. I always thought the the, the pyramid story was so funny because it was always bigger than the monster. So all he had to do was just step on it. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, it was like he st- the pyramid thing stands up, and I'm like, just step on the fucker, you know? <laughs> Pyramidus. Pyramidus. Yeah, and then uh, no, then they, turn, that's no, when the pyramid they can turn around and fart on the monster and kill it. Oh, my. And that was where then we, we started to see like a lot of the originals started to leave. Kimberly left and gave her to uh yeah, cat. She didn't need a big hook a, and a sword cat. to do it too. Yeah. And I remember that and then no they and then I, I kinda dropped after a while. I think I dropped when they went turbo. Yeah. Uh, I dropped I stopped, with turbo I, because I they literally had a, stopped watching after turbo. Turbo turbo sucked. I'm sorry. I, once they brought that kid in, I'm like, okay, he's a kid, and when he morphs, he gets big. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, okay, this yeah, is I kid. stopped. I stopped watching yeah. it, and then I got back into it with space. I saw Zordon, I, I, I saw Zordon I, die. I, I yeah, that was. I, I, I thought would, that was the end. Okay, it's like Zordon's dead. They lost their powers. I was like, okay, I thought that was the end of it, so I stopped watching it. I didn't start watching it again until Wild Force, actually. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's what I I, I did not watch a around. lot of space stuff. I I did not even watch a lot of the space stuff. I I would tune in a little bit to see what's going on. Like, okay, I was hearing the, the Titanium Ranger and everything. I'm like, okay, so he's he's he's, he's super strong, right? So he and I'm like, no. Because he's t- when he gets cut. I had parts. friends in high school who was still watching it, and I was like, I was like, that's I was like, you're watching those old reruns, and they said no, it's still going on. I'm like, what? I think, I th- I think with me it was like when when the power when they got when I think after Turbo, once I dropped Turbo, I was like, you know what? I'm I don't know I don't know if I can watch it, and by that time that's when we. Started seeing all these. We started seeing all these Power Ranger clones, like VR troopers and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, Mass Rider like, didn't last that long either. Yeah, and you know, oh, and then so I, I just really got all. Oh. Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, uh-uh. yo, no, the, you know, Ed, uh, oh. yeah, Tyler likes the Beetleborgs. I'm sorry, so, man. Uh, I don't. Uh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't like the Beetleborgs. Uh, what was the? What was the? Uh, and then I think after that, that was about the time I just, and then I started hearing my friends saying, man, you, you saw what Rat Trap did? I'm like, who's Rat Trap? And they were like, yeah, it's, it's Transformers. I'm like, there's new Transformers? They're like, yeah, it's called Beast Wars. I'm like, wait, come on. You gotta watch it. I was, I was like, oh, great. This is cool. I was like, a new Transformers. I was like, all right. 
And that's that's where I I knew right there I was I was Power Rangers. What? Oh, like, I Beast got Wars. One for you. Hey. I got one for you. Does anybody remember these two shows? Number one, does either one of you two remember Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad? Yeah. <laughs> what now? Do I have to repeat it? Okay, uh, the Superhuman... I heard, I, I, I heard you, I heard you. I just don't know it. YouTube <laughs> it. Just YouTube it. That's all I'm going to say. But you think that's bad? Oh, oh, I, I got I got one. I got one. Does any either one of you ever have everyone bleh, have either one of you heard of? <clears throat> I can't believe I'm about to say this because I remember watching this. Tattooed teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills. Yes. <laughs> God. That was on. That was on USA. That was on a USA Network. I, I looked it up on YouTube and I, I was like, that. Oh God, right. I, I remember watching this shit and I saw how they transformed like. Scorpio, Centaur, Taurus, Apollo, and then I, I would ad lib going douchebag. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing: I remember watching what episode of that. But I know I remember sifting through channels when I was younger and seeing that I was like, "Goodbye." <laughs> it's like I, I was like, "Look at that!" I was like, "Look at that Beast Wars." I found something better than that. <laughs> Yeah, it's like with with the tattooed right. fighters. It's like somebody made like a cheap knockoff of Power Rangers in someone's mother's basement. It's just like, God, it was terrible. Because I'm saying it's like all it all those clones started coming out. I'm like, oh God, it's like it was just like how with clones. It was, yeah, it was just like all these. Once turtles got big, that's when we started seeing all these anamorphic cartoons. Hey. I'll, I'll give I'll give Street Sharks credit. I it had a following, and I did watch Street Sharks. I watched Street Sharks. I did watch Extreme Dinosaurs, and then when they actually had a when they actually had the Street Sharks and the Extreme Dinosaurs come together, and they had a show together, I watched. There's a but lot of cartoons I missed, like the, Toxic Crusaders, the Swamp Thing cartoon. I tend to, uh, I tend to forget the Swamp Thing cartoon reason. <laughs> but when you got shows like Biker Mice from Mars, I'm like, hell no. Okay, oh, like, oh, Chris, Chris, let's not forget Cowboys of Mesa. Say Yo, that. Hell no. Oh no. Hell no. I could. I'm like, get, get, turn it off. <laughs> you know, it, I I just could not I'd watch. Turn it, I'd rather turn on Ren and Stimpy and be happy. <laughs> okay. Right, okay. But then in '94. Disney surprises me with Gargoyles, and I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Oh, my. oh, this is so good. This is this so was, good. And this, was the, this was the show that proved, you know, animation could go places. You know, it wasn't just Batman. I mean, Gargoyles went to some dark places, too, and got away with it. And here I am thinking, go back to that, Disney. There was an episode yeah. that I think was only, like, broadcast one time. Because I've only seen it once, and the only way I'm able to see it again is to YouTube it. Uh, it was really, really early in the series. It was the ep- I don't remember what the episode was called, but I. You talking about when Elisa yes. got shot? Yeah, and she was in a see, pool of her blood. I was kid, like, my jaw dropped. I was like, uh, I remember that episode because it was basically. Uh, I I remember pretty very well. Broadway came. He 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 had just came from a movie. He's watching like a, a like a Clint Eastwood like type movie, and he was liking the gun. And he he comes into Elisa's apartment, and she's like, you know, is that you, Broadway? He's like, yeah. He's like, I I put on some steaks. You want one? He's like, yeah, cool. He sees her gun, and he's messing with it. And he just turned, and boom! It just fires. And sorry, I was playing with your gun. I hope I didn't break anything. She's on the floor, pool of blood, and it's like, oh, I can't believe they and, showed that. And ironically, that episode had Broadway's best moment in the whole se- in the whole series when he hits those crooks, yeah. and he's like, "What is this? Another gun to yeah. kill people?" <laughs> and he like gets yeah. the guy's face. Like, where were they taking him? He's like, 
Well, well, here's the thing. They do broadcast that episode, but they edited it. Yeah, they and and then um, Disney uh, when it was when it when they brought it back to Disney XD, they started rebro rebroadcasting it in its original because it it would come on later at in the morning. So it was like okay, but still, yeah, they show him his hands bloody and everything. Him going uh, Broadway's spotlight moment, like especially when uh, he went after Tony Drake on. He's like. Who do you work for? Why did you get this gun? Like it was, it was crazy. And then just seeing uh, Goliath in there, you know, Goliath and Elisa, it was just like, you know, just hearing Goliath say, you know, just just hearing Keith David's voice was just like, oh, magic. He was just like fight Elisa, just just fight. I remember like, the nostalgia critics said he would go gay for that voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like just hearing. Just keep David's voice come out of Goliath. Keep David portray Goliath reading the fucking phone book. Yeah. Well, I mean, with Greg Weissman behind Young Justice, I'm surprised. Where's Keith David? I'm waiting for him. <laughs> yeah, I, I would figure he would have gotten Keith David for something. I mean, but. Because yeah. that, that dude, whatever Greg Weissman is behind, Keith David is right behind uh, Greg Weissman. It was just like, oh, uh, and then, and then you got Sally Richardson Whit Whitfield who played Elisa. If you've seen her in person, she's a spitting image of a real life Elisa. Yeah, she is. And it's like, oh my god, like, it's like she looks just like, like, like oh, if they like ever made live, she's action. like you're panting like a dog high. <laughs> yeah, like oh my god, and she did such a great job. With Elisa, they changed it. yeah, because of her, they changed her ethnicity, oh. being half black and half Native American. I was like, oh wow, because I read that Elisa was gonna be Latin. She was gonna be Latin. I was like, oh wow, so they actually changed it. Um, and I just, I that series just was so good. I, I loved what was one of my favorite episodes, Thrill of the Hunt, when they introduced the pack. I was like. Like, I love that episode. That was really where they were still naive and they were thinking like everything on TV was real. So they thought the pack were in trouble. Like I love that that scene where, you know, uh, Hudson was like, I, I've watched them on the picture box, Goliath. They're constantly attacked by these evil God ninja. Bless like maybe Asner. they need our help. God, Ed Asner did such a great job with that voice too. You know, that, that was just really good. Uh, I love that. And then when they started getting into the Avalon stuff, I was really fine with that. And then you, we see Goliath and Demona's uh, biological daughter, Angela. And I'm like, my God, she looks like, like Demona. But just with uh, Goliath's coloring. And, you know, Goliath was all like, you, you got many daughters, many mothers and fathers. You know, but you're my biological father. And she, I was like, yeah, Goliath, like, come on. Like, yeah, it's been proven that you are her biological father. And and then, you know, I love the episode where we started to see that they're not the last of their kind. They were, there are other gargoyles around the world. You know, like there were a group in Guatemala that protected the rainforest. I was like, oh, that's cool. Uh, you had... A, London yeah. clan. Yeah, uh, the Japanese clan. Which was great. I do a little time travel, kind of Doctor Who style in a little bit, you know. Uh, when he went back to uh, 1940 and protected Griff during uh, the, the Blitz, the Blitzkrieg, of, uh, uh, which was great. Um, you, know what, you know what also about that episode, Chris, that I find yeah. interesting? That that episode had the cojones to say Nazi instead of Germans. Yeah, they they. That's why it was like they're saying Nazis, they're not saying Germans. They're like Nazis, and I was just like, wow. Like I love that, and and of course the the Phoenix Gate. That's pretty much how he got back there, and you know we because at first when, when that episode came out, I'm like, why is Goliath on a, a statue? Like. 
and then they're saying, you know, we, where's Griff? And and then just you know, hearing Goliath like, oh no, no Griff, who's Griff? I don't know Griff. And then we find out he had to go back in time just to meet Griff and I things like that. Stuff. And that was just really good. It was good writing. It was just really good writing, good acting. Yeah, acting wise, it was really good. You know, I mean, the fact that they were bringing in classic Shakespearean characters and giving them a whole new feel to them, like Macbeth. I mean, just when they finally did the story of Macbeth and Demona, that was like, it was always contemplated, like, how did Demona survive? How did she survive? How come she, you know, and we finally got to see what happened. Um, yeah. And then we, even that, we even got to see that when she finally told the story of what happened, like during the first five pilot episodes where she was like, you know, I, I made a deal with the captain. He was supposed to keep us safe and everything like that. And then we finally see that in when they did the origin of seeing that, we see that she had a moment to tell the rest of the clan, like she didn't tell. And then she hid herself. And it was like, oh, my God, like, all this is because of you. This is your fault. And well, the, she, other, the, other thing, the other thing is, like, I loved how they tied up plot points, the backstory to the backstory with the whole how the Archmaid pretty much explained why the, the weird sisters wanted Demona and, and Macbeth. Yeah. Like, you know, wow, Greg Reisman, you thought like 12 steps ahead of everybody. Their backstory, they, he, Greg Wiseman was doing like backstory after backstory, and he would do it so well. Like when we saw the Archmage, um, I'm forgetting who um, voiced the character. David, David Warner. David Thank Warner. He, yeah, he he did a great job voicing him. We saw, we thought the Archmage died, he felt his death. But unfortunately, his future self saved him, and and then uh, we that's where we saw him eat the. The Gurumorum, Archimedum, we saw him put it in his mouth and eat it. What am I he, supposed to do? Eat he had the uh, phoenix. Yeah, he's like, what am I supposed to do? Eat it? Now you're learning. And he put it in his mouth and ate it. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and, of course, he had the Eye of Odin, where they finally went to there. And we, we got to see Odin. You know, <laughs> Odin was a child of Oberon. And Odin he came of here. Oberon's I, children. Yeah, it was really funny because I love where he was like, he's like, I'm not one of the most patients of gods. Give me my eye. <laughs> like, and uh, uh, I love where uh, Elisa was like, no, Goliath, don't give it to a quiet wench. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Like, I don't know. Like, I saw Odin. Like, I'm like, where the hell's Thor? Yeah, it was like, you know, where's Thor? Yeah. And, you know, I, I love that scene because Odin's like, he keeps changing into different things, and it, I love when he changes to that polar bear. And then Goliath was like, "That was no ordinary bear. It had one eye, like that old man. I think that's the same person." It was, it was, it was great. Um, yeah. hey, um, I hate to cut y'all off, man, but uh, I'm looking at the time where we're running at two hours and forty minutes. Oh God, <laughs> this is going to be wow. a long video. Yeah. I think this is a, I think this is a good time to go ahead and stop recording. We can keep on talking, but we need to stop recording here. <laughs> mm. uh, everybody, if you made it this long without turning off or going to sleep, you certainly have earned our respect. <laughs> 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 well, I, I, I think this I think we better go ahead and cut this off now before we before we put people to sleep here <laughs> uh so i am blue goblin and the... oh my, <laughs> my friend and kid and i'm Zilla. kevin smith for comic book man i mean no uh no <laughs> no but uh yeah this has been my 300th video i want to thank everybody for coming along even if you weren't here the full two hours and 40 minutes I might cut this down. I might not. I don't know. But I want to thank everybody for, for watching. And uh, more reviews are coming in the near future. Uh, thanks for subscribing. And good night, everybody.